Chair Russell, I can confirm we are live to YouTube. You can start the meeting on your call. Great, thank you very much, Ian. I just realized I've lost my agenda with the annotated. Oh, there we are, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the continuation of the budget meeting that started on December 13th, on Tuesday. Uh, so in this meeting, we are discussing the draft capital budget, uh, the advanced tenders list, things like that. We already have a motion on the floor. Uh, that motion is uh, that the budget committee recommend to regional, recommend regional council uh, one, approve the base capital budget for 2022-23 and approve in principle the 23-24, 24-25, 25-26 base capital budgets, uh, approve the advanced tender requests, the capital reserve withdrawals, multi-year capital projects. We have requested a, a briefing note um, accelerating the upgrade program for HRM uh, uh, crosswalks. And as is standard... Sorry, the meeting format for today is we are going to continue with the budget meeting for uh, this morning until we finish. And after that, we will be dropping into a regional council session, uh, just a few minutes long, to ratify the decisions uh, and the motion that we are making today. Uh, so at that point, I would step out of the chair. Uh, we would switch formats. Uh, the mayor would be leading the council meeting, and then we would adjourn until after Christmas. As is standard with these, uh, with these audio, uh, sorry, with these virtual meetings, um, I'm going to run through an audio visual check for all of the councillors. So, District 1, Councillor Dago Gammon, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Uh, Councillor Hensby, District 2. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? Uh, we're doing well. We can't see you. Could be something in front of your video. Um, Doesn't appear to be. I don't know. Okay. Try, try it again sometime. Yep, I'm sure. Uh, Councillor Kent will be with us a little bit later. Uh, Councillor Purdy, District 4. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Councillor Austin, District 5. I'm here, Mr. Uh, Chair, ready to go. Good stuff and good morning. Uh, Councillor uh, Mancini, District 6. Do we have Councillor Mancini in the meeting? I don't see him. Okay, um, Councillor Mason, District 7. Hello, Mr. Chair and colleagues, ready to go. Good stuff. Um, Councillor Smith, District 8. Hey, colleagues, we're back. We are Thank back. <laughs> Looking forward to the meeting. Absolutely. Uh, Councillor Cleary, District 9. Hello, Mr. Chair and colleagues. Uh, happy to be joining from District 9, Halifax, West Armdale. Good stuff. Um, Councillor Morse, District 10. Good morning, all. Compliments of the season. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cuddle, District 11. Good morning, everyone. Nice to uh, see you all, though. Missing, you, missing being in chambers already. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Um, Councillor Stoddard, District 12. Good morning and happy seasons. Um, Ziona Stoddard, Councillor, District 12, Beachville, Lakeside, Timberley, Clayton Park, West, and Wedgwood. Good morning to my colleagues and Mr. Chair. Good morning. Uh, Deputy Mayor, District 13. Good morning, Chair Russell. Joining you from balmy Hammonds Plain, St. Margaret's this morning. Looking forward to a, a great meeting. Absolutely. And hopefully a quick one. Uh, Councillor Blackburn, District 14. Hello, good morning, everybody. Joining you live from my kitchen in Beaver Bank, otherwise known as Martha Stewart's worst nightmare. There we go. Um, uh, Councillor Outit, uh, you seem to have the wrong camera displayed, or maybe the uh, right one. I don't know what that means. We can see uh, the table. Oh, all right. Well, it's a nice table, and I'm very glad to be here this morning, and uh, I will get this fixed. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And Mayor Savage. 
Okay. Tim, you're All not good. muted. All good. Okay. Good morning. Um, so we have a, a list of speakers as a reminder to everybody um, in the meeting. We are on the main motion. That motion has been pasted in the chat and I read the essence of it um, a little bit earlier. If you would like to speak, please indicate that in the chat and I will uh, move through the list as we get to it. The first person on my list is Councillor Austin. Go ahead. The element of surprise. Um, so, uh, where was I here? Um, I did want to ask about um, streetscaping. Um, I also have notes for the public Wi-Fi fair payment. Um, so but I think we'll start with the streetscaping piece. Um, the budget book has a bunch of references for Argyle, um, E37, E38, E40, um, some general streetscaping projects. And, you know, I'm supportive of those. Um, what makes it hard, and for colleagues who have been through a couple of budgets for me, the one that I keep uh, referencing is the deteriorated uh, brick pavers on Portland Street. And uh, our, our staff, they do a good job when they get a chance to fix it. Um, there's just not enough of them. So, you know, each year they do a little bit, they do a little bit. Um, but it's like, uh, it's, you know, it's like building the pyramid down there in terms of um, timeline. Um, I'm just wondering if Brad's on the line or Kelly, because I recall we were doing an overall project to identify the condition of all our existing streetscaping assets, the ones that were pre-Argyle that didn't have the benefit of a forward thinking, well, we'll keep some money in reserve to actually plan for maintenance that had no maintenance plan and were allowed to deteriorate. I'm just wondering if we can, uh, if there's a comment, uh, if there's anything available in terms of the status of that uh, work to assess those existing assets because, uh, you know, I don't see anything in the capital plan. So I'm hoping that if they're not in the capital plan, that maybe we'll have some more in the operational side. Thank you. Do we have either Brad or Kelly online? I don't see them in my list. Well, I guess I have no questions then, and I will have to uh, circle those uh, around when we're not on capital budget and operating. Do we have Dave Rigi online to talk about transit fare payment? I see Dave Rigi online, yes. So, oh, uh, and, and actually... Jacques, Kenny Kelly and Peter Duncan are both on the line, uh, as does Dave. Okay. I did not see... Uh, Kelly a little bit earlier, but she did pop up there. Uh, let's jump back to the streetscaping if uh, uh, Kelly and Peter, if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I might need to defer to Peter on this because it's a, it's a pretty detailed item. Uh, so, you know, um, certainly infrastructure planning would uh, would carry out the initial streetscaping project. And then I think you're having trouble hearing me by the way. No? No, we carry out the initial streetscaping project and then uh, TPW would carry on with ongoing maintenance. So Peter, if you can, uh, if you've heard the question, can you confirm kind of who's carrying the budget for ongoing maintenance for the Argyle project to help answer the uh, council's question? Thank you. It's not really the Argyle project. It's more the, uh, we have we have money reserved for Argyle and other streetscaping where the Portland and the Gottingen uh, streetscaping has no ongoing budget and has been left to deteriorate over the years is so, yeah. more the issue and we've been doing some work on it it's just you know without programming it as a capital item we're left with uh you know our ta our uh folks in road operations doing what they can bit by bit and the bit by bit uh, means that i've been asking about this for four four budget cycles running now right so i believe in that case i was i was deferring to tpw i believe it's tpw but i just want to, uh, peter to confirm that thing Peter, you're muted or your mic is not working. You don't look muted, but we can't hear you. And Kelly, you're right. There were audio quality issues. Are, are you able to hear me? Yes, Peter, we can hear you now. Okay, uh, sorry sorry about that. Um, uh, through, through you to the uh, counselor, um, 
Uh, it's uh, Peter Duncan, Director of Infrastructure Planning here. Um, no, I can confirm that there, you know, there are there is a minimal minimal a minimal amount of funds in the budget, about fifty thousand a year for recapitalization of existing assets. And to confirm Kelly's question, um, it is budgeted through a P&D capital account uh, for use by a TP, TPW staff in the recapitalization -cap process. Is that allocated for this coming year? Uh, I'm sorry, Councillor, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I can follow up offline and yeah. bring something to a future meeting if need be. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm assuming I'm probably out of time. Uh, you have another three seconds. Um, so why don't uh, you come back if you don't I'll mind. I'll save my Dave Rigi question on mobile payments for fares until later, unless someone else picks it up along the way. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I have added you back to the list. Uh, next on my list is Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, Councillor Austin, because I didn't have streetscaping as a thought, but I, I, I do remember us getting a motion or a motion, a report, based on a motion because of those conversations. And I now have to look back because I might now have more, more questions because you you brought it up. So I'll, I might come back to that one. Uh, the, the questions that I had left over and I'll try to get to them. Um, one was the George Dixon Center recap. I'm just wondering uh, two things. What, what are some of the plans with the 250,000 that's in the budget? And I'm also curious uh, if it'd be worthwhile to get some kind of, if it's not a briefing note, a memo, just understanding the condition of the building because uh, I don't need, oh, my mouth stopped working. Um, uh, I don't need to tell, well, Denise who, who was in the role, but me and Denise and even before that, Brad, we talked about the Pacific Center many, many times. And, and I don't feel that the condition of the building is getting any better. So I do wonder on some of the ongoing issues that are happening at that building. So. So for the question is wondering what the 250 will do, but also I, I'd like to get more details on, on what actually is, is, is happening with the building itself. Now, my most stopped working, so I can't scroll. Um, okay. And I don't know how to deal with this right now. <laughs> with the, my most. But all right, uh, I see that. Maybe we can go on to, maybe someone can answer that and I'll try to figure out why my most stopped working all of a sudden. Maybe I can find the battery kicking around. Thank you. Do we have someone who can address the Dixon Center? Uh, Maggie McDonald, Acting Executive Director for Parks and Recreation. I'd actually defer to uh, John McPherson if he's on the line. So I have a little camera issue here um, to, uh, to speak to that if he's able. Okay. Good morning, John. Good morning, John McPherson, Executive Director of Corporate and Customer Services. Uh, so we do have 250,000 uh, proposed in the budget for uh, general recapitalization work. Um, in the subsheet, there's a, a number of items listed there that we would like to tackle. Uh, our first step after approval will be to prioritize those in conjunction with uh, operation staff and parks and rec staff. Uh, and there is a longer term plan in, in the 10 in the year plan for a larger project there. Okay, Councillor Smith, does that uh, address it? You it. seem to have a mouse back, good stuff. I don't, <laughs> I'm, using oh, my, okay. I'm using my touch screen, but where I have two screens and where my actual notes are, I can't access. Uh, so um, John, I'm just wondering if it's possible to, for, and I don't know if it has to be a, a memo or not, but just understanding what the condition of the building is and what are some of the, the ongoing issues there. Because uh, just, just walking in the building itself, you can see you can see there's there's some ongoing uh, building problems. So is, is that something that could be provided? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the councillor, uh, we can put something together uh, on the condition of the building. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to come back. I was pretty much done. I think I have two more questions, but I can't get yeah. to them. <laughs> okay, if if you would like to come back, I can add you to the list again. That yeah. will give you an opportunity to reboot. Yeah, that's fine. I was hoping I didn't have to, so I didn't have to, you know, anyway. All right, I'll be back. Thank you, Chair. Okay, 
Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, and uh, okay. Uh, jumping back into this after a pause, it uh, kind of always uh, stunts the momentum here, but um, I had a, some questions about um, uh, the Lions, uh, the Spryfield Lions Rink Arena. And I just note in, in the plan, um, it has in here some money for what looks like repairs for, well, some, some work to be that the total project cost is, is 15, 15 million. And, um, and I don't see exactly how this work's gonna be implemented or how we're gonna to get to the overall repair of this arena. You know, back in, in June, um, we, submitted a, we submitted a funding application for some federal government money. And in that report, it recognized that not only is this rink heavily used in all seasons, in the winter for hockey and, and uh, skating purposes, and in the summer for box lacrosse and has a gymnasium, and uh, it was a COVID site and is, uh, you know, right in the middle of a rapidly growing, um, rapidly growing community. So the, the use of this facility is only going to increase, but that it has some major structural issues um, to the point where parts of the building are actually closed off for public use. So um, the recommendation in the staff report from June was that um, the facility being replaced as a retrofit is not considered best value. And um, I'm just wondering what the plan is for this building, because um, I, I can't, it, when I'm looking at the capital plan, um, it doesn't seem to be really kind of spelled out how we're gonna get to uh, where we need to be with this. Okay, can I see John McPherson again? Go ahead, John. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the councillor, uh, you will see 500000 in year four. Um, that is to start the consulting work for the larger project, which, um, as you can see in the subsheet, is a much larger number. Uh, we've applied for funding uh, in, in hopes that we do get that. Uh, the project would move forward in that case, but uh, at this point, it's, it's starting in year four. In year four, yeah. So I guess that would be that would be my concern, just given the state of this building and knowing that it already has some major structural issues to it. My concern would be that by the time we get to year four to start the planning, um, we might see bigger issues and and potentially the you know my fear would be the loss of this the use of this facility as a whole. I, I don't. Um, perhaps we can have a conversation about that offline, but I. I, um, yeah, that, that rink is, a uh, is a growing concern. Um, I don't, do I have any more time? I can't see a time clock here anymore. So. No, I'm keeping that on question? my phone. You have a minute and a half. Go ahead. Um, all right. Um, so I had another question, just, uh, C10, uh, page C10. I was just wondering, um, and you know what, this is one of those things where we probably talked about this kind of deepen our understanding each time. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering the, the, the on C10 for uh, finance and HR business foundations, the business-wide systems, and that's like a really large ticket item in the budget. And I'm just wondering if someone could uh, speak to that um, about the work that's being done in, in the next couple of years, which is like $20 million. Um, what exactly what is happening with that? And I see Jerry, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Jerry Blackwood, CFO and executive sponsor for the SAP Business Foundations project. So the work uh, that's <clears throat> taking place right now is there's there's three projects. There's the um, Human Resources uh, Employee Central project. There is TRM, which is Tax and Revenue Module. And then there's the Finance project, uh, which is uh, the SAP Upgrade S4 HANA. So those are the three technology projects in that program. 
So uh, right now, um, the um, HR project is scheduled to uh, go live. It's uh, uh, June implementation, June 22. TRM, which is our, our tax and revenue module, is ready to go live uh, February of 22. And <clears throat> our SAP S4 HANA, we have just come to the end of the design uh, phase. And uh, next uh, phase is build and deploy. So um, there was, uh, I mentioned to Councillor Smith, he had a question on Tuesday about this. There was an information report uh, issued to Council on this and what we will be doing with the, uh, the finance project as for HANA will, uh, this year will be development of a, an RFP and then we'll be going out to, uh, to market for, uh, for an implementation. Uh, with that, so scheduled for uh, uh, 20, probably late 20, 2023, 20, 24. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Yeah, and you know, I just, yeah, the sticker value on that is like, um, so I will go seek out that information report and uh, learn a little bit more about that. I um, have a few more questions, but I will come back. Mr. Cherry, could add me back to the list, please. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Councillor Cuddle. Councillor Morris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we allowed to bring amendments forward now or is it just question time? You are allowed to bring amendments forward. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'd like to bring forward my sidewalk amendment. Should I put it in the chat or what's the best way to do this? Uh, if you could read that aloud, that would okay. help. All right, thank you. I move that the budget committee request a briefing note on the impact of and funding sources for an additional 7.5 million to the proposed 2023-24 capital budget for new sidewalks. Thank you, I'll do we have a- that, Mr. Chair. We have a seconder of Councillor Cleary, thank you. And the uh, motion itself has been pasted in the chat. Go ahead, Councillor Morris. Thank you, and thank you, Councillor Cleary. Um, so just a reminder that we have about two and a half million in the um, sidewalk budget for the year. And uh, that, that um, contributes to about 10 sidewalks uh, being built. So this would quadruple. <laughs> quadruple the sidewalk budget and uh, you know just extrapolating a little bit uh, would be approximately 40 sidewalks um, at the rate we're going we, we can't even get one sidewalk built uh, in each district so this would uh, increase that and try to address the backlog of 600 sidewalk requests so I'm hoping people could support this or maybe there's an appetite for even more in uh, more in the budget for sidewalks Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Morse. Councillor Austin. Uh, th <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Councillor Morse, for bringing this forward. Um, I, I definitely support going and getting a briefing note on this. This is an area, it's much like traffic calming, um, where, where our list continues to grow and we're really not keeping pace. Um, I, I do think it's it's worth worth definitely worth a look. Um, it's a little bit more of a sticker shock thing than uh, traffic calming, unfortunately. But that that is just the function of that. I mean, that's what a sidewalk costs. Um, just one quick question for staff: um, if there's anyone online that can answer it, um, I suspect the budget amount for this um, program really hasn't changed in quite a long time. And of course, you know, inflation is driving the cost of these things up more and more. Um, we're not keeping pace as it is. I'm just curious if anyone has any background of the last time that this budget line was, you know, significantly changed. Do we have someone from staff who can answer that? We have Brad. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and, and members of council. Um, Dave may have a more significant uh, or more accurate date, but I'll tell you it's been a long time. Certainly hasn't been increased since I've uh, been with TPW now third year, and it was, certainly was uh, was uh, the same a little bit before that. So it's it's been a considerable amount of time. And on terms of inflation, um, you know, look, we we drive that budget to meet sidewalk segments that we wish to advance. So that 
number dances, as you know, it's within a bundled account for active transportation. So that number expands and contracts based on a certain, certain bandwidth, if you will, within the active transportation budget. So a bit of a waffly answer, but it's pretty much been the same. Thank you. Waffly, but I think generally uh, probably in the <laughs> accurate in terms of where we are, that this program line really hasn't seen a significant increase in a long time, which is part of the challenge that we find ourselves in in terms of a growing list. Uh, thank you for that. I see Dave Hubley. David, would you like to add anything to that? And just yeah, as, a, just as a, a reminder for everybody, um, where this is uh, the first time we're back at budget online, Please don't forget to introduce yourself. Uh, Mr. Chair, Dave Hewley, Director of Project Plan Design Services. It, uh, at one time, the, the new Cybox had its own, own account. Um, it's, it was rolled into the AT strategic back a number of years ago. But uh, Brad is right. I've been uh, doing this for about 15 years. And I think the new sidewalk allocation has been over the 15 years within that two to $3 million range. So it really hasn't changed over the course of time. Okay, thank you. Councillor Austin, does that address it? It does. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I, I don't know if it's a, this is a Brad or Day question. So my question is 40 more sidewalks. How realistic is that for our contractors to be able to do that work, uh, considering the length of our construction season? Sorry, Councillor. It's, it's sorry, Brad Anguish, uh, Director of uh, Executive Director of Transportation and Public Works. And anybody else you want me to be here this morning? <laughs> sorry, where does the 40, 40 sidewalks come from? I'm confused. Well, it was a number, I think the councillor who put the amendment on the floor said 7 point, what was it, 7.4, 7.5 million equals to about 40 sidewalks. I don't, I don't know where that number came from, but that's why I'm asking. Not even, not even close. Uh, sorry, man, maybe those are sidewalk segments or something. I don't want to uh, speak for the councillor, but as, as I, to use the Cherry Brook example, um, one kilometer sidewalk in Cherry Brook, uh, which is needed um, is about $4 million. So that gives you an example. Uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, total backlog, we did some work around this just to give council some perspective. So we tried to just put some rough costs to the backlog. You're looking at a number uh, uh, somewhere between 400 and $600 million. We'll call it a half a billion. If you want to get to the high priority numbers, it's around 100 million and 100. And when we say high priority, we're just looking at, you know, various incomplete segments, you know, closer to the core where we have high pedestrian generators, etc. Um, so that gives you a scale of the numbers. As far as how much you'll get done in any given year, it'll depend on the segment. It'll depend on the design. It'll depend on. Uh, and by the way, sorry, those numbers have no land involved with them. So there is, that does not include land acquisition. We, we have not done that kind of scoping for sure. And so, uh, you know, 7.5 million is a significant increase. Uh, it would get probably two decent uh, additional segments done per year. Uh, if we go with some of, and then add in our gap programming that we do now, as you know, we're trying to really close some of the, the disconnects in the pedestrian system. So, but, but, you know, you could look at two to three major sidewalk segments per year. We will need, I, I will just highlight when we bring back the briefing note, if we go ahead with this, and I'm glad the councillor put it for year two, we will need a little bit of staff uh, bump to help get this program up to a higher level. And the other, the other state qu question is also, and I, and I appreciate Councillor Moore's bringing this forward, then it has to get prioritized, and there's no guarantee that uh, any of those uh, new sidewalks added will be even in Councillor Moore's district, correct? I mean, it's all based on priority. She's not asking for a specific uh, area, is that correct? 
Well, look, we'll we'll bring back uh, based on the size of the budget, as always, we'll bring back our recommendations for priority sidewalks and and uh, and, and let council uh, decide whether we've got, got it right. We also intend to bring back sidewalk criteria for evaluating uh, priority for council's uh, consideration. So. So bottom line, yes, we would bring back a, a priority-based uh, uh, recommendation for capital. And as always, it may not include uh, sidewalks for a certain district. Yeah, you know, 7.4 million or 7.5 million is a lot of money, but when you're talking about sidewalks, it's not a lot of money. It's not enough money, especially uh, as Brad stated. Look, I'll support the, uh, uh, the, the request for a briefing note, but I'm not sure what this really does and uh, is 7.45 million maybe better allocated somewhere else if we're going to add it to the budget, but uh, yet to be determined. But I, I'll support the motion for the briefing note. Thank you, Brad. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Chair and colleagues. Uh, great, uh, great discussion so far. Uh, and I'll definitely be supporting uh, the, uh, the briefing note. Uh, just based on what, you know, Mr. Anguish said, uh, even if we, you know, just did the high priority hundred million dollars, uh, if we're doing around two and a half million now and add seven and a half million, we're still at 10. So that's 10 years just to get through the high priority list, um, at four to 600 million for all of them. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe one of my grandkids will, uh, will be advocating for, uh, for those new sidewalks, uh, by that time. So, you know, Obviously, our job is to prioritize things, but when we think about sidewalks, sidewalks give us healthier residents because they have the capability of walking uh, more, especially for active transportation. It leads to more independent kids because uh, a lot of parents won't let their kids walk in neighborhoods where there aren't any sidewalks, so they end up driving them. Um, also, if people can get around, so I've got a neighborhood, for example, Springvale uh, in the old county, just on the other side of Joe Howe. It's a walkable neighborhood. You could actually walk to uh, to downtown and, and Quinpool and many amenities in, in not very long, but most people drive there. Uh, and so if you had fewer car trips, you got fewer greenhouse gas emissions. So it helps us with our climate goals. Uh, and as we discovered at um, uh, Environment Committee, you know, we will uh, in our business as usual or even just moving in the, at the pace we're moving, we will actually consume all of our carbon budget by 2028. Uh, and so we have to start spending a lot more money uh, if we want to meet our uh, Halifax goal that we unanimously said we, we wanted to. So I'll support this. I look forward to getting the uh, information and the discussion uh, when we finally get to our overs and unders. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Cleary. Councillor Cuddle. Thank you. Um... Yeah, and uh, thank you, Councillor Morris, for bringing this forward. I think it is an important discussion. Um, I am glad to hear that if this, when this, if we if we approve this report, that it will come back um, with some sense of priority. And I'm just wondering, you know, similar to traffic calming, like what is the um, process for prioritizing where sidewalks go? And I'm wondering if there's a broader plan or a broader strategy around how sidewalks can also connect into active transit as, um, as an evaluation piece. So, you know, we know we're building active transit. Um, you know, there's trails, there's corridors, there's protected bike lanes. And, um, you know, how, you know I'm, I'm trying to imagine what the big picture is around, you know, prioritizing and and how we can start to create a, my biggest concern in um, uh, proving a, an increase in budget is that we're building sidewalks that are disconnected and that um, aren't really you know prior in in areas where there's where there's a big priority um, so I'm just wondering um, Brad if you could just uh, come back and just speak a little bit more about what we could expect um, in a report in regards to how sidewalk you know um, projects are selected how they're prioritized um, and if the program we have now is kind of adequately addressing this broader kind of strategic approach to how we might think about developing sidewalks. 
Sure. Thanks, Councillor. And uh, you are correct. There, when I when I speak about gaps in the network, that's exactly what I'm speaking about. And staff is actively prioritizing filling in those gaps and making those connections between active transportation routes and, and all modes can be fed. Obviously, we're very focused as well on having all of our bus stops accessible by 2030 in accordance with accessible leg uh, accessibility legislation. So I, you, you can be sure those are, that is in the program now. That is what we're looking at. And the size of the budget forces us to focus on gaps and not huge, huge, uh, huge uh, um, expanses of sidewalk. In terms of the briefing note, we absolutely will bring you back. You know, the idea of the briefing notes is high level. I've given you some of the flavor for it this morning, but we absolutely will include just the high level uh, uh, analysis or high level information on how we set priorities now. So you'll have that at the time of your decision. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Brad. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Hensby. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. My question regards to, uh, I'll put it in the chat line, regards to capital budget item project uh, on page B22, uh, the demolition uh, contracts or whatever for uh, the old Eastern Shore Consolidated School in, in Mosher River. I was kind of hoping that we could have a modified uh, demolition instead of raising the building and destroying everything that's there. There's still good infrastructure there. The pad, the steel girders and stuff, the septic. Is this, in, is this in relation to the sidewalk amendment? Oh, okay. I thought we were finished that discussion. All right. My other question about the sidewalk is in regards to what about rural, the rural realm? Apparently, there's a report coming soon to the Transportation Standing Committee. I was kind of hoping that there might be some creative um, discussion on taxes. I've been saying for years now with this integrated mobility plan, we should have an integrated mobility levy. It's more plausible and easier to understand than this climate climate change tax. I think people want to see productive program or pro productive projects that are related to that tax. The uh, the climate action stuff is kind of a, it's a, I don't know how to, an enigma, I guess you can say, what, what does that really mean? But an integrated mobility plan will address our climate issues and stuff. And I think that it'd be more tangible and understandable by a lot more people. So uh, that's my, I'm so waiting to hear in regards to this, uh, the rural realm of uh, sidewalk report, when's that coming and will that have any bearing on our budget process? I'll attempt to answer that. Uh, so first things first, the report uh, is, is, is readied. It is working through executive review right now. I expect it to be on the January 27th, I believe is the next transportation standing committee and therefore to council very shortly afterwards. Um, speaking to the creativity of the financial solutions, uh, I trust my colleagues in finance are listening as they were contributors to the report. So, uh, but I, I can assure you there, are, there, are, there is a recommended funding mechanism in the report. Um, and I think your other, your other question was, is it dealt with in this budget right now? Uh, I, I guess the quick answer is no, in that we need council to see this report, address it. Um, that said, you know, we have, uh, we have an active transportation uh, budget. And as you can see, the bundled accounts in this capital plan, um, council would probably have the ability to either divert money if they wanted to move on the pedestrian realm sooner, uh, or, um, or add money. But I would stress that at this point in the budget process, not unlike Councillor Morse's uh, motion, um, there would be some design work, consultation work with communities prior to actually building. So, you know, for year one, um, we'll help council define any funds we need to, to get the program up and running. So I guess long story short, don't foresee huge money being required in this first year. So I, I would suggest it's low risk. A uh, second point I'd strive to make is that a lot of the rural pedestrian realm projects are um, on a target, uh, you know, are, are, are a uh, highly desired, seem to be highly desirable by the province. And of course we're submitting funding applications as well. So um, all of that is, is in motion and we'll bring back the report on 
January 27th to see where it goes. Thank you. Well, on that point, I'd like to recommend that our regional transportation tax structure that we have now basically covers the rural commuter shed according to the regional plan. That should be changed into the integrated mobility levy, bring in rural sidewalks, bring in paved shoulders, bring in recreational and AT trails and stuff like that. It's all part of the funding mechanism, as well as rural transit, their funding. That's the way to go forward on this particular matter. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Hensby. Uh, Councillor Daigle-Gammon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I would also like to, to support the amendment and um, actually most of the questions that I had were already answered and that was just to make sure that I understood what the priority, how, the, what was the change in criteria, Brad, that you talked about that the reports want to speak to and uh, to understand where the rural suburban um, areas fit within this, the, the new look at um, the sidewalk, how you prioritize. Thanks. believe there was a question there. Um, the When we bring back the briefing note, we'll clarify for council how we prioritize sidewalks and other active transportation um, um, methods. Uh, so we'll clarify it there. Uh, there is no particular change per se. Um, I don't believe the motion would cause any major change, but we'll we'll bring clarity. So at the time of the motion, at the time of the decision, council will know what their the priorities that we would be bringing back our recommendations. In terms of rural, um, without getting deep into this today, the rural pedestrian realm program, uh, the, the the funding mechanism is not the same as uh, for uh, um, the urban tax rate. So we'll be bringing back the funding mechanism, recommended funding mechanisms for rural active transportation when we bring back the that um, report on January 27th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Stoddard. Button. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry back. Um, I have a couple of questions and I think they refer to Brad as well. Um, my first question is, what is the cost of asphalt siding as opposed to regular siding? Uh, siding. Asphalt sidewalks as opposed to regular sidewalks. Um, secondly, um, to Councillor Cleary's point, in my district, there's no sidewalks on the school routes. So parents drive their kids to school, which affects the greenhouse gases and also parking issues because they're trying to vie for the, the low, close, my tongue's tied. They're trying to vie for the uh, closest parking area to the school. So my question is, uh, are part of the priority school areas for sidewalks? And finally, um, traffic calming is becoming um, popular and uh, done in residential areas, but I find that without sidewalks, it's only addressing speed. It's not addressing uh, so much the issues of the children not having sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'm going to ask my uh, colleague Dave Hubley to uh, ramp up to address the cost uh, question and uh, the priority question. Uh, in terms of the uh, traffic calming, uh, I think we exhausted you on Tuesday and went over the change in priorities from the new uh, administrative order uh, that's on the table that does consider uh, where there's sidewalks present and where there's not. So that new AO, um, if you haven't had a chance to kind of look into it, please do. And that will that will hopefully alleviate your concerns on the priorities of the um, on the priorities of the uh, traffic calming. And then I'm going to ask Dave to um, chime in on costs, please. Hi, Mr. Chair. Through through to the councillor. I, I'd have to just double check on that, but I, I believe uh, an asphalt sidewalk cost relative to concrete is about a third. 
And I, I didn't quite capture your question on the criteria. Um, Is it relating to schools? Um, the traffic calming or the no sidewalks? Probably the traffic I, calming. I, I thought I heard schools. Yeah, uh, it, was, um, it was pertaining to schools, Dave. It was pertaining to yeah. schools. Yeah, so we, we have a we have a number of criteria that we look at counselor when we rate each location. Uh, schools is uh, schools rather are uh, a major component of that criteria. We we look at uh, the different uh, um, levels of schools, uh, whether it's primary, um, elementary, rather junior high, high schools, uh, and the proximity to uh, to the uh, location of the sidewalk. So it, it, it plays a major factor in the overall rating. Okay, because I have an area, thank you for that. I have an area in the BLT that has two schools. One is primary to six and the other one is seven to 10. So, and they're both on the same lot. So I'm just wondering if that would be an area we would consider sidewalks where it would be um, more or less um, providing um, sorry, providing sidewalk to two schools rather than just one. But uh, yeah, the overall rating system has a number of factors or elements to it. Um, so again, schools are, are a big factor, but we also look at the classification of the road. Uh, we look at density. We look at whether it's on a transit road or not, um, proximity to playgrounds safety so there are again a number of factors that come into play when we come up with the final rating for each location so is this perhaps something we should talk about offline or just a general sure. information okay great yeah, no thank i you. can give you a call if we, yeah okay okay thank you so much okay thank you very much uh councillor stoddard councillor outfit Thank you. Good morning, all. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to be uh, supporting this uh, request for the briefing. No, no problem with that. Uh, just a couple of comments, questions for Brad. I mean, we have this list of 600, which I'm sure is very frustrating for staff and for residents and for council, the way we had the long discussion the other day about traffic commons long list. And uh, so we probably need to have a look at what actually gets onto this list again, and maybe as part of this briefing note or the next step after the briefing note, Brad, maybe a little bit of a strategic plan about what's going to get added to the list, how we're going to address it, this sort of thing. Uh, just to take the sort of opposite opinion, just quickly from what, what I only just said, I think there is an opportunity here, and I know others have talked about this, that if we, there's no chance that you know, a million dollars a kilometer of getting sidewalks into an area, you know, that perhaps some some humps and, and tables would uh, improve things significantly at a fraction of the cost. And I know we're, we're looking at that now as part of the, the AO um, on traffic common. So in, in, in my district, for example, the developers have built uh, a lot of sidewalks in their developments. And that's great that that is now required. We have selectively put some near the schools to get to CPA, you know, up Douglas Street to get to Bedford's uh, to Basin View. And of course, along to dangerous areas of the Bedford Highway. So I think staff's been great at setting priorities within that tiny budget that they have. But, uh, but obviously we need to increase the budget if we really want to uh, make significant impact. But I'd like Dave, just or sorry, Brad, if you could just give me uh, just a little bit of understanding that perhaps the briefing note or what comes after the briefing note could give us a little more guidance on how to address this overall list of 600, which is so frustrating for everybody. And if there could be a list done at that 600 or a cross check to see where humps and tables might actually uh, be of some assistance. Hey, thank you. Um, all reasonable asks. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the zero to 600 lists. I'm not sure that would be particularly helpful for council. However, uh, I think what might be helpful is for us to try and give some uh, description and identification of what we would see as high priority. I would also step off here and, and I'll, I'll commit my team uh, because we need to do this anyways. Um, 
for the first 7.5 million, we'll try to identify what those projects would be, what we might recommend them to be, um, because they would be in 23, 24, and obviously we would have to start, if council was to approve the additional money, we would have to start uh, working on the designs uh, for those projects, you know, right away. So hopefully that kind of detail will help, um, I guess. I just want to be cautious. This is meant to be a budget briefing note as opposed to a full-blown report. And I'm, I'm just getting nervous about my ability to turn it around in time for you. So uh, I just ask for your patience and trust that we'll bring something back high level to support the decision. Uh, but I've given you a thumbnail sketch of what I think I can do. Thank you. No, and I, and I, Mr. Chair and, and Brad, I am fine with that. But I just think a logical next step after the briefing note might be to come back with the like you've done with other things to try and come back with a logical plan to address a, a huge list. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and uh, thank you for your patience with me arriving at the meeting a little late for everyone. Thank you for that. So I have a, a little different approach to this because um, when I hear, of course, I, I've already, um, stated my presentation around not wanting to have as large of an increase um, in tax rate. Um, I am supportive of the climate changes. Um, and then when we start talking about add-ins, I mean, that's all playing into it. But where my mind is going today, I think Councillor Clary has perfectly articulated all the benefits of sidewalks. And uh, uh, so I don't need to go down that road again. But when I think about that, and then I hear um, you, Brad, which which I, I understand this has been our approach that that what might come back on a limited amount, which is seven million, seven million to folks in, in District uh, Three, is a huge amount of money to be looking at potentially only addressing some more core sidewalks. All of our districts have residents who have a need for sidewalks needs to, uh, and the ability for us to affect the impact of our Halifax climate plan. And if we can't, District 3, for instance, has uh, all, two thirds of it is outside the core and some of it is rural. And in both cases, we have, we have limited transit, for instance, in the Eastern Passage area. So people are in cars. Um, they're not going to get out of their cars if they can't get transit. They're not, there are more areas in our, more places in, in those parts of the district that need sidewalks to address traffic calming and unsafe streets and all those things. But when I hear about that, that the priority is going to potentially be um, using this money again to the, to the core, that concerns me. Uh, it would be one thing for me to vote for a budget that, that District 3 residents are going to see an impact. But if we're not going to get there where they're going to see some of this infrastructure, the majority of this um, budget and capital plan is, is very strongly in the centre. And I am saying out loud, and maybe it's time for this to have a friendly amendment, if Catherine is open to it, that we look at this $7.4 million and ask Brad to look at it. How do we how do we spend that outside the core? Because there are districts outside the core that need this infrastructure. We are not able to address the the same capacity because we don't have we don't have we have communities that are spread out, but nonetheless need this infrastructure. Um, when I think about Horns Road in Eastern Passage, and I think about Caldwell Road with all my schools there and, and a traffic situation, a, a sidewalk, we've got folks, and I think Iona spoke to it, we have folks who are feeling so at risk for their children, they're only around the corner within a, a few a, a kilometer and having to drive their kids because they dare not give them, put them in a position where they have to walk on a, a side a street without a sidewalk and cross an already um, risky road. So if I'm not going to see some potential for this money to be spent in some of the districts that that are not fitting that current parameter of what's being considered a priority, um, when do we become a priority? Because I feel like already uh, I know, and I'm 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 saying this, and I, I know you don't like the 
the, the divide, but there is a lot going to center. It's time to bring some of this out. So I don't know if Catherine, if Councillor Morse is open to a friendly amendment. I suspect it'll generate a whole new, a whole new uh, conversation. I'm open. Uh, if, if I don't do anything, my message is, is just to you, Brad, and your staff to give some further consideration. I know the report is coming back around rural. I have a small section district three that is rural. Two thirds of it is is within it is outside the core. So I'm looking. I'll be looking in this <clears throat> this report, and I'm happy to support the the motion. But I need to say we need to see some things happening outside the center and outside the core. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Would you like to respond to that? Yeah. As always, uh, thank you, Councillor Kent. Uh, appreciate your passion here. And uh, sorry if I've misled you. Um, that that motion would not be that amendment would not be required. Uh, District three, uh, the bulk of it is absolutely in the consideration of this uh, this uh, motion, and uh, it's just a matter of priority. And Dave gave you a good thumbnail sketch of all the things that are considered within those priorities. That, that would not be required. Uh, and like I say, the rural pedestrian realm, just because of the way the current tax rate is done, that's why uh, IMP Action 82, I believe it is, um, required the rural piece to come back. And uh, again, we're addressing that component through that report. So um, all, all aspects are considered. There is no, there is really, uh, anyways, I, I apologize if I led you astray. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there would be no exclusion of, of District 3. Okay, um, thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Morse. Uh, sorry, Councillor Kent. I'm going to step out of the chair for a second and ask uh, Councillor Daigle Gammon to assume the chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I I'll am. Sorry, Kathy. I was going to say, I'll start the clock. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, I'm absolutely going to be supporting this. Um, having uh, having an understanding of what we would be able to get for the seven and a half million dollars uh, towards uh, towards sidewalks is is going to be a big help. We have a huge deficit, um, a huge backlog of sidewalks that are needed. One of the interesting things that has happened is. Uh, as the regional center has grown, it predominantly has sidewalks on both sides of the streets. Um, as we have new developments, we are basically insisting uh, that uh, uh, developers put in sidewalks into the new developments. And when we look at the, the traffic calming AO that, uh, that just came out, it is awarding additional points for areas that don't have sidewalks. What we're left with when we consider the, uh, the historic development uh, that has happened generally within the regional center, um, as well as the new developments that are happening. What we're left with is, is an area generally outside the regional center where we have generally very few sidewalks and we have a, a huge gap and we need to, to be able to put sidewalks in there. Adding speed tables will help slow the traffic down. But in the example of old Beaver Bank Road, and I'd invite anybody to come out here and walk old Beaver Bank Road with me uh, most of the time where it is a narrow two lane road, one lane each way, and there is nowhere to walk. I'd especially invite you to come out here after a snowstorm where there's snow piled up. And, and so there's room for, if you have a stroller, if you are disabled, we have speed humps and I appreciate that. You're now a user who, uh, who has some sort of impediment with a stroller, you're trying to go over the speed humps because the snow's packed on the sides of the street and there's one car going beside you because there's no longer any room for two cars. There's also a pinch point on, on Old Beaver Bank Road of a bridge that is exactly two cars wide. And if you have, if there is any snow there, it makes it more narrow. And if you have a stroller or anything else, it makes it more narrow. So we desperately need sidewalks out here. Uh, we have areas where, there, where the speed limit is 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. And we have children walking to school beside that um, with no sidewalk. So they're walking just on the shoulder of the road against traffic that is faster than we would normally see in a residential setting. Um, I am absolutely in support of, of the 7.5 million and, and uh, would appreciate uh, strong consideration in the priority list for 
especially those streets that have no sidewalks on either side. I don't know if, if that is already one of the criteria or not. Uh, if it's not, I would appreciate it if it is included as, as a criteria in determining where sidewalks go. We just, we have a need for it all over the place and especially where there are no sidewalks at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may resume the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Daigle Gammon. Uh, Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for this, Catherine and Councillor um, Morris. Really happy to see this come forward. My question is, where would the money come from? Would it be re reallocated from the budget or would this be like a, an, an over that we will vote on in the parking lot at the end of the budget season? But before someone answers that, this is exactly what I was talking about with priori re prioritizing the budget to directly impact the people and our communities and where infrastructure is lacking. Um, and instead, <laughs> just the whole prior prioritization shift. So I am in support of this. We, we need sidewalks that makes communities safer, children safer, uh, promotes active transportation and less car driving to places that are short distances away. Like for example, schools, uh, like was already talked about today. But I am not in favor in any way, shape, or form of the 5.9% tax increase proposed proposal or adding to that by adding more uh, budget increases on top of that. So uh, not sure how that works with voting, like to vote yes for the uh, supplemental report to come back and then vote it down when it does come back. I, I'm not sure. So I, I guess just clarification on where this money would come from. Would it be reallocated in this budget that we already have? Would it come from adding more increase to the proposed tax increase already? How does this work? At this point, this motion is simply for the briefing note to determine um, to determine what would happen with that 7.5 million. Uh, it is not removing something else from the budget. It is not reprioritizing anything. Um, I will let uh, Jerry and Brad speak to uh, any further comments on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Jerry, Bra Jerry Blackwood, CFO. Um, in the fiscal framework that was tabled back in, in late November, um, this additional um, uh, 7.5 million per, per Councillor Morse's amendment uh, is not in that uh, is not in that framework. So, um, you know, two options would be one, you know, reallocate cap the capital budget to to accommodate uh, to accommodate that, or to to uh, come with an option to you know increase taxes or or debt uh, to uh, to do that. So. Um, you know, um, finance will work with Brad, uh, you know, on the financing piece around this briefing note on, on financial options. Uh, who decides Brad, that? Who, any... who, who makes that decision? Sorry to interrupt, Jerry. Like, who, who decides where that money is coming from? You and the executive director, like, for example, Brad, in this, this instance? Uh, well, well, ultimately, uh, staff will put, uh, put forward a recommendation and some options. And council will ultimately decide, uh, you know, uh, what option they they want to take uh, with respect to addressing uh, the amendment that's been that's been put forward. And that happens during the budget process. Uh, yes, that that happens during the budget process. So that that this would be similar to uh, what we call our our overs or our BAL uh, adjustments. Uh, that would be uh, that would be debated uh, later. The parking lot, like what we did last year, all those lists. Of we things. can say, yeah, they can be put on put on a parking lot. Okay. The second option, Councillor Purdy, is it is not included in the budget this year. It's included in the budget in a future year. And that's that's the amendment, correct, for the following year not this coming budget season. Is that right, Councillor Morris? Or 20, did I see that right, 23 you, you saw that right, it's 23-24, and what we are looking at at this point is 22-23.
but we're voting on the amendment for the following budget. We're voting on receiving a briefing note related to the funding for the 23-24 budget year. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry for this confusion. It's It's all good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next is Councillor Lovelace. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Russell. Uh, I'll be brief on this. Um, I do think that uh, we need more information. I'm never against getting more information. Uh, but uh, the way that the motion reads currently is that it appears that we're looking at new sidewalks throughout all of HRM which we're not, you know, we're not going to build sidewalks on provincial roads. That's just not going to happen. Uh, and if it does happen, it's going to be in a very specific and unique situation for those communities uh, based on the community's ability to uh, it fund these initiatives. So I, I would just like a friendly amendment to be very clear and to manage expectation uh, that it states for new sidewalks on municipal roads. I, I, I just think we have to be very careful about setting expectation. The other thing I want to point out is that the reason we're having this conversation to begin with and, and splitting hairs and, and, and trying to be stuck in the weeds uh, around, you know, criteria and uh, specific details around where these sidewalks could go uh, is because we haven't funded the IMP, right? If the IMP was funded then we would have a plan for the actual implementation. Instead, what happens is we pick pieces out of the IMP, uh, you know, specific to current needs within a counselor's district without actually thinking about how we're going to implement IMP overall. So I'm frustrated uh, with that because I don't think it's a good use of our time. I don't think it's a strategic approach. I don't feel that in the end, we're doing the best service that we could for our residents. So um, yes, I'm just wondering if that if we could specify that um, friendly amendment. Um, and also just <laughs> colleagues, we have to acknowledge that the IMP is not funded. Uh, and it, clearly, uh, this 2017 report is way out of uh, meeting any, you know, of its uh, really important uh, project goals because it's not funded. So I feel like we're sitting in the weeds when we really need to step back and look at the big picture, similar to Halifax, right? Uh, it's not funded. So anyway, uh, just hoping that we can make that small change. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Uh, Councillor Morse, uh, as the mover of the motion, uh, would you accept that friendly amendment specifying that it is municipal roads? And I think um, Councillor Cleary was the seconder. Yeah, I, I don't have an issue with it. I kind of, I thought that was assumed that HRM doesn't doesn't install infrastructure on, on provincial roads, but I, I certainly don't have a problem with that. Uh, my, my original attention here was to increase the budget enough that there could be projects across the whole municipality. So, um, but anyway, I, I see it as a friendly amendment, but I thought it was assumed that we would be installing sidewalks on municipal roads. Second is fine with it. Thank you very much. And we have that uh, amended motion in the chat. Councilor Lovelace, does that address your concerns? Uh, yes, thank you. I think that we may understand the intent of the motion, but the public reading this would not. So we just need to manage expectations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just briefly, I, I think uh, it's important to note we have two major projects in flight right now. Brad talked about them a bit, but uh, I expect the briefing note will come back and reference them because we're already talking about significant, you know, $50 million investment in rural sidewalks and mobility in uh, village town hamlet centers. And we also have the extant uh, outstanding report on the suburban uh, mobility and active transportation connections, especially focused around main streets and uh, transit hubs. So, you know, that's coming as part of the IMP. Ha report hasn't come yet, but, but we're expecting it next year. And I think that would significantly uh, change the water on the beans when it comes to uh, what is being uh, funded and where. So I, I look forward to this report, but I think we have to keep in mind there's lots of other moving pieces happening right now to address the same concerns. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Councillor Mason. Uh, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, uh, yeah, I was going to mention um, what Way just did, that we, we have been looking at these rural active transit um, ways next to rural roads. And so I think, you know, putting some emphasis on that would be good for the future. And we should probably communicate that to people. The other thing I wanted to mention to uh, Councillor Russell's point is we did discuss snow clearing, prioritizing snow clearing in school areas where children had to walk at the last budget and I, I maybe someone can refresh my memory I don't think that passed I'm not sure because I don't see that um a, that report coming forward anywhere but but maybe I'm wrong um hopefully hopefully it is because I 100% agree with you we need to prioritize the clearing of sidewalks in school areas where the sidewalks exist so people don't have to walk in the roadway um and uh you know, and just how dangerous that is, um, you know, not just in areas where there are sidewalks, but in areas where there aren't. So we, we you know, I think that is a major consideration. A um, couple questions, one around um, Halifax, you know, I know we say Halifax is not funded, but Halifax should actually be funded through every project that we do in how we do it. Just wondering with the sidewalks um, that are that are concrete, uh, are we moving to the green concrete solutions um, is that a consideration are we starting that with our with our sidewalk projects um, to counselor I forget who asked about the asphalt um, sidewalks but you know is that you know given that the, the huge difference in price can we look in some areas for more asphalt sidewalks I know in Herring Cove for example um, we have a combination of asphalt and concrete sidewalks at this point the asphalt sidewalk even though it's inferior to the concrete one provides a safe space for people to walk on a busy road and if that's what we need to move some of these initiatives forward I'd be interested in seeing that um, option addressed through this uh, this um, briefing note which is I know Brad you're probably shaking your head but <laughs> that that would be great. The other thing is um, just wondering if we could talk about things like lo local improvement charges. Is there an option in communities that really want to have sidewalks to be able to raise some additional funding to supplement this through a local improvement charge um, in areas that aren't a priority on the priority list, uh, just as a way of kind of accelerating, um, you know, accelerating this work. And the other thing is, you know, back to the funding and to some of the points that Councillor Hensby was making and Councillor um, Lovelace and, uh, and Kent um, ab about the funding of this. So in the urban tax zone, um, sidewalks, you know, you are, you're charged, I believe you're charged a fee. And, and if, if this could be broken down in the briefing note, just a little bit under the funding of this, who is paying taxes for sidewalks? And, and who and who is not. And in the urban tax zone, you know, I believe that you're charged for sidewalks if you live within a kilometer or a kilometer and a half of the sidewalk. So people who have to walk paying a tax towards sidewalks and, um, you know, seeing it as a community benefit. And I just think not just for us, but for the public in general, understanding the different tax taxes people are charged for the different services that um you know they have and what those services are um is an important part of this discussion so um you know even if in this briefing note to keep it brief if, um, we can reference where that information is available so people can access and find it that would be great thank you thank you so thank councillor cuddle are you asking for a response right now or additional information in the briefing note um, if Brad could say if it's possible to put that in the briefing note without needing to go into tremendous detail about it, but I, I you know, I do think it's an important part of this conversation. I, Brad, I don't know if you have any comments on that or how we might be able to get that information forward. So, Councillor, uh, I'll be honest, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I've been three years trying to learn the way the tax rate works with the services in this area. So the Rural Pedestrian Realm Report is absolutely addressing those differences, and we'll speak to this exactly. Uh, in terms of your point, 
about and and so i'll also as, as councilor mason said i'll also try and have this cross-referenced this report and this briefing note so they'll, they'll dance together uh, bottom line uh second thing is you had meant you had mentioned lic's that's an interesting one um that gets into the dreaded discussion of queue jumping um when uh let's just say a more affluent community can raise an lic uh, versus a community that can't, and that causes some problems when you're trying to manage priorities. However, um, I can try to address that somewhat in the briefing note we come back with, but that that does cause problems over time, um, as, as some of you may be familiar with on the recreation side of the house. And then on green concrete, I think it was Councillor Cleary that put forward a motion about our concrete program. There is a technical review underway. That report will come back to Council, um, maybe in the fourth quarter be between now and April, that will speak to, uh, you had mentioned green concrete. Uh, it will speak to concrete quality and the results of the technical review. So that should be addressed at that time. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank you very much, Councillor Cleary. If I could. Oh, I'll let Jerry speak there, uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and yeah, just to uh, add on to Brad's comments, um, yeah, finance will work with, with Brad on this briefing note and we'll put in um, uh, a section on uh, tax policy and structure around uh, sidewalks. Uh, sidewalks, as, as uh, Brad alluded to around LICs, used to be, um, used to be a program. And uh, <clears throat> I think we, we moved uh, away from the LIC program from, from sidewalks for the reasons Brad discussed and put it into the general rate uh, and, and did it more on a, on a real priority basis, but we'll bring that, that information back and, and work with Brad on that in his briefing note. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cleary. You, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just uh, wanted to speak to a couple of comments made by other councillors. Uh, Councillor Kent mentioned uh, and, and Brad uh, clarified that the money was not going to be spent uh, just in the core. Um, the area that I had referenced is actually part of the old county, um, Springvale, so definitely not in the urban core. Um, and to Councillor Lovelace's point about the IMP not being funded, actually, if you look throughout the four-year plan of the capital budget here, uh, you'll see about $400 million in roads and, and active transportation, $160 million just for the electric buses over the next four years, uh, $18 million for road safety. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in here that is IMP. And, and so I'm, I'm going to guesstimate probably around five or six hundred million dollars worth of stuff is just IMP within this document. And planning is underway for things like rapid transit and those will come to future uh, budgets. So the IMP is definitely being funded. Um, the problem is it's huge and uh, it's not something we can bite off in one budget. Uh, but the, the IMP is definitely in here. Same with Halifax. You know, there's a few projects in here now, but certainly... I mean, part of our big global discussion uh, in this particular budget cycle is, are we ready to raise money for actually spending it on Halifax and all the things that come along with that? And electric buses could be one of those things that, you know, you'd say that's definitely a Halifax or at least the, the differential between what we would pay for a diesel bus and what we would pay for that. So, um, you know, things like sidewalks, in my mind, are both, you know, could be a Halifax thing, could be an IMP thing. But um, our job is to fund those things. And so that's what we're talking about right now. So this whole process, this is us funding the IMP. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I just wanted to chime in um, mainly because, uh, and, and she referenced that when she was speaking that this was blunt and likely to raise some eyebrows as Councillor Kent's comments. Uh, regarding um, the sidewalk program. And I, I thought you spoke well, Mr. Chair, in identifying that, um, you know, the program actually, the big gaps are primarily outside the urban core. Like I think of my district is, is putting this money going to mean a sidewalk on Portland Street or Alderney or Wise Road or Victoria? No, they already have sidewalks. The only places in my district that are kind of lacking in sidewalks where there are some real missing connections are actually 
the parts that are the most suburban, the things that the parts of my district, like Manor Park, there's one, one significant gap. There's a gap in Creighton. I have no idea where they even rank on staff's priority. I consider them significant. Staff might have them marked as low priority. But those are the parts of my district that look like the other side of the highway over the Cirque, Woodlawn, Port Portland Hills. That, those are the suburban areas, right, of, of, of my district. And that's where the gaps are, because that's where we weren't building these things. So this, uh, I think we're, if, if, if our starting point, like, I mean, if you don't want to vote for, if you're worried about the tax rate and, you know, you, you don't want to vote for this, that's fine, right? Like, that's totally, like, we have to make difficult policy decisions all the time. Um, but if your starting point is, well, there's nothing in this for my district. Why should I vote for this? That's a pretty grim place to be in terms of a government. We are Halifax regional councillors. It means we have to think no, beyond. We're also our district representatives. You know, it's, it's a tough line to walk. But we also have to think about the good of the whole city at times here. And if, if you're waiting for a briefing note to come back to see if there's goodies for your district, I mean, I just think that's a profoundly sad place to end up being, to be making decisions on. And I'm not usually this blunt. I, I can't think of many times I've buzzed into, you know, kind of spar with another counselor like this, but I, I, I just fundamentally, I mean, if that's what we're gonna do, I have to start changing a whole lot of my voting decisions out there because uh, it's certainly not an, an approach that I've, I've adopted as I've been on this council. So I, I encourage you colleagues, uh, if you think this program is a good idea, judge it on its merits. Let's not get into, well, um, trying to divvy up a pot 16 ways. We all have different compl complex needs. And that means sometimes voting for things that aren't necessarily going to be a direct, immediate benefit to your own district. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor mm -hmm. Austin. Councillor Morse. Wow, thank you. Thanks for the discussion. <laughs> There's a lot more in sidewalks than I ever imagined. Um, my, my goal here was to try to find a sweet spot between uh, you know, not increasing the budget too much, but increasing it enough that we could make a difference across the municipality according to the priorities that we establish. And I think we need more information in order to do that. There are a lot of, there are a lot of different priorities and uh, we need to get those spelled out, I think, in more detail. And that, that briefing note, I think this briefing note will do that. Um, in terms of, you know, the basic principle here, I think we're trying to find the most effective way to spend tax dollars to give the maximum benefits to our citizens. And one example that I have is that we have designated routes for bus rapid transit that don't have sidewalks on them. And I think I, I would like to see as part of the prioritizing setting process that we look at how to encourage people to get on transit with at least a sidewalk <laughs> so that they can get to the bus stop. So that would be one of my goals, but I know there are different priorities across, across the uh, municipality and I'm looking forward to this report to spell out how we could do this fairly and, and to the maximum benefit. So thanks for the discussion. Thank you very much, Councillor Morris. Councillor Kent. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wasn't going to respond, but I feel um, I have to. I want to be very, very clear. I have consistently and openly and genuinely been considering all of HRM in all of these, any comments that I make it before council, and I have every right to. And I also think, make no bones about it. Every councillor here has things that they are considering for their district in every conversation and every decision that we make. I also was very clear that this is a situation where we are asking our entire HRM constituents, which should, to, to consider a tax increase and or consider supporting the decisions we make at council. So we have to, as councillors who are in some of the areas that are consistently having to fight tooth and nail every time we come into a conversation, to have some consideration to a unique or different experience that we're experiencing and we have scenarios in our districts that are not uh, like another. That's part of what our job is, to make sure that we're not lost or forgotten. And so um, when I spoke of 
a couple of local issues. I also spoke about the districts that are outside of the core and it was focused specifically on a reference that Brad had and he explained that to me and I really appreciate hearing that because that was concerning to me that the priorities were going to be focusing on the center core and I, I, I don't feel like it's fair to be chastised by any other counselor for being that voice of my constituents. So I am certainly, and I spoke before, I am happy to support this, but I, I need to represent the needs and, and the residents, not only in my area, but all of HRM, who potentially could feel unserved in a decision that we make going forward on this budget. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Kent. Uh, I don't have anybody else in my list to speak on this amendment. So ready for the question? Thank you. Um, Mr. Clerk, I'm going to hand it over to you. Beginning with District 1, Councillor David Gammon. Voting in favor of the amendment. 2, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. 3, Councillor Kent. In favor. Four, Councillor Purdy. In favor. Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. In favor of the amendment. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. The sidewalk in every pot. Yes. <laughs> Ten, Councillor Morse. In favor. 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councillor Stoddard. In favor of the amendment. 13, Councillor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councillor Blackburn. In favor of the amendment. 15, Councillor Russell. In favor. 16, Councillor Otis. Voting yes. Mayor Savage. I'm voting no. Thank okay. you. Thank you. That amendment passes. We are back on the main motion and my list has Councillor Morse next. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Morse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think I'll pass for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Stoddard is next on the main motion. Go ahead, Councillor Stoddard. I think I'll pass for right now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. This is the easiest debate ever. Um, Councillor Cleary is next. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, couple of quick, quick, quick ones, and I'll put them both out there because um, they might be answered by the same person or per people. Uh, <clears throat> first one is uh, of the, sir, the street recap budget is about 37 million. I think 32 million is new money for this year. Uh, the rest is carryover from last year because we can't always spend uh, what we, what we uh, budget every year. Um, how much of the street recapitalization budget would you estimate is going towards traffic calming of, of some type? Because um, when we take a complete streets look, uh, and I know these projects are getting more complex and adding more uh, 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 elements to them. Is there an estimate in terms of either proportion or, or dollar money? Because in past years, uh, you know, I've tried to move money, say, from street recapitalization to traffic calming. And I don't think I need to do that this year because, A, staff have already put in a relatively high amount for traffic calming. And, B, if the street recap budget is, you know, significantly going towards traffic calming initiatives. However, and this, the reason I ask this is in discussions we've had, and I know Councillor Outhit uh, uh, was you know, going down a similar path, um, that you know, do we need to add more money to traffic calming if, if we're already spending millions of dollars out of the, just the recapitalization budget on traffic calming? Because when we had the discussion a few days ago, the implication might be that you know, if, for example, we decide to not, uh, uh, you know, change the traffic calming uh, uh, administrative order, as things get recapitalized, maybe we won't do those streets if they're not a priority street or, or you know, something along those lines. The second question is in the AAA network, um, we are looking at spending about $19.4 million over the next four years. We had $25 million budgeted. I don't remember us spending $6 million last year. 
on, on AAA. We certainly didn't get a lot of projects done. So ha- did we actually spend that five or $6 million last year? Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> I guess an ancillary question is why are we so late in getting the AAA network done? Uh, you know, 2022 was supposed to be when we had it finished. Now it's pushed up to 2025. Uh, so those are my two questions, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Brad. Uh, great questions, Councillor, as always. Thank you. Um, on the, so I don't have that number at my fingertips, but we can get it. Um, there are, uh, certainly we focus this, this year on getting all of the councillors their traffic calming projects in their lists. However, we did not, you know, we haven't uh, divvied it up as to what's an integrated project, what's a standalone. However, we know those and we can, uh, we can get that number. For so I'll have to haul that away um, and, and, and I'll, I'll respond to all of council with that number. In terms of um, the AAA bike network, I'm going to ask uh, either Dave or Dave McIsaac. I'll just, um, Council, we, we are dealing with some, some COVID pieces this morning, so we're, we're doing our best to cover these, uh, cover, cover this meeting. Um, I think Dave McIsaac should be available to comment on this uh, further. But I will say uh, on the AAA bike network, um, I understand. And when I joined TPW, there was a report absolutely that said 2022 would be the date. Um, I can tell you upon taking over, I knew I knew that was unreasonable. We've communicated that since. However, uh, I'll ask Dave to fill in kind of the details, the specific details that you've asked around the six million. Uh, but in terms of overall, what you know, the lesson learned here is retrofitting a AAA bike network into the existing street grid, as you uh, well know, has become very difficult. It requires a lot of consultation, requires a lot of land acquisitions, a lot of land coordination with develop- new development. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, oh, not to mention the new designs, I'm going to turn it over to Dave McIsaac, hopefully, to pick up on any details around your, your financial question. Thank you very much. Uh, Dave McIsaac is just making his way into the meeting at this point, it seems. Yeah, I, don't with us Dave, for... I don't know if Dave Hubley can handle it. Um, and I apologize for this. We have a few things going on in the background. Right. No worries. Mr. Chair, if you wanted to go to the next speaker, maybe when Dave McIsaac's online, he could then jump in. I, I believe I believe Mr. McIsaac has joined us. Uh Good morning. Uh, sorry, folks, I'm having a little bit of connectivity issues here. Um, so on the, I think that you're asking me to talk about what we accomplished last year for about $5 million. Um, that Just for, projects. If, if, if I may, for everybody at home, this is uh, Dave McIsaac. Unfortunately, we don't have video for that right now. Sure. So David McIsaac, uh, Manager of Active Transportation. Um, some of the projects last year were the Wise Road Bike Lane. Uh, Tony, uh, if, had... if I can interrupt again, I'm sorry. Uh, Councillor Mancini, you are you weren't muted there for a second, but you are now. Thank you. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry to sure. interrupt. Uh, Wise Road Protected Bike Lane, which was sort of the Dartmouth side of the McDonald Bridge Bikeway Connectors Project. Uh, we got some uh, local street bikeway built in the north end of the peninsula on Lehman Drive. Um, the Dahlia Oak Project. Uh, is is at least partially complete construction uh, over in Dartmouth. And uh, we had a project to install some new signals at uh, Oxford Street uh, from Allen to Oak. So those were, uh, there might be one more, but uh, we also did a bit of retrofit on, on some of our existing facilities, adding some permanent pavement markings, but that would uh, cover the lion's share of, of what we uh what we were able to accomplish and, and what that money went toward in uh, 2021. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Cleary. Councillor Lovelace, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Chair Russell. Uh, so I've got a, a bunch of comments specific to E5. Um, that is the Bedford West Road oversizing. Um, so, I recognize that the West Bedford, um, you know, master plan uh, is is in execution right now. We're we're moving forward. 
uh, fast and furiously with changes on their UTAC, much the <laughs> needed changes, uh, including the roundabouts uh, that will be currently is almost completed and the one that we need uh, next year for uh, before the new schools open on Larry Utah. Um, so that's great to see that work happening. Um, unfortunately, uh, what we don't have is a plan to mitigate the consistent flooding that's been happening since Hamas Plains Road uh, was widened in 2012. So for 10 years, uh, the Hamas Plains Road, which is a major uh, corridor between the South Shore, Bedford, Dartmouth, uh, you know, all of the municipality, uh, consistently floods because of uh, issues with stormwater management. Uh, road infrastructure is, is deficient. Um, so I am trying to understand, uh, Brad, what that 3.5 million in the 2025-26 specifically, what is that for with regards to that um, you know oversizing and, and also keeping in mind that that highway 113 is still in limbo with regards to uh, the province and their plan. We know that uh, at one point there UTech was supposed to be four lanes. Uh, it's it's not. Uh, we've got uh, you know significant issues with the lack of infrastructure at Larry Utech in Hammonds Plains Road. Uh, Peter, I, Peter, I see you can can speak to that specifically with the 2025, 26, um, and and wondering, you know, is, is this money to raise the Hamas Plains Road at Blue Water? Uh, I'm just looking for some solutions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, certainly uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the uh, councillor. So the money that's programmed in the four-year budget uh, in 25, 26 is three and a half million dollars, and that's programmed for an expansion to the intersection of the Larry Utech Boulevard and Hammonds Plains Road. And that was part of the master plan that was approved by council, I believe in June of 2020, there was, there was an update brought back to council for the Bedford Westmaster transportation plan. Um, that is not earmarked for the remedial work required to eliminate the flooding. And I think you're referring to the flooding in the area of the Blue Water Road on the Hammonds Plains Road. So none of that money is earmarked for that purpose. There is um, in the climate action capital plan, and I can appreciate there's not a lot of uh, detail on this in the capital budget book, but there is a report that went through ESSC uh, this week and will be coming to council in January that, that will provide more uh, detail on the climate action work writ large, uh, some of which relates to um, a critical infrastructure analysis. So there's $600,000 program that council will see this in, uh, actually it's, our, it's already a matter of the public uh, record. Um, it's in the report that went to ESSC. There's $600,000 programmed um, in 2022 to do a critical infrastructure analysis. And I would anticipate that will shed more light on the Blue Water Road flooding issue. Um, there's that and there's several other major corridors that as uh, council is aware are consistently flood. Um, so I would, I would, um, and I know you didn't ask about this, but I'll just uh, mention them, you know, areas like the Bedford Highway that floods, uh, Shore Road and Eastern Passage, Hamlin's Plains Road. And uh, so I, I would expect this critical infrastructure analysis will shed more light on those as, as well. Okay. Um... I think what I'd like to do, thank you for that, Peter. I, I, I recognize there are a, a lot of moving parts here. What I'd like to do, Chair Russell, is just put an amendment on the floor for consideration, um, <clears throat> if I may. And I will also put that in the chat. So I move that budget committee request a briefing note on one, <clears throat> road network infrastructure improvements and proposed timing of implementation to resolve infrastructure deficiencies, lack of traffic control and stormwater manage stormwater management and alleviating congestion on Hammonds Plains Road from Blue Water Road to Larry Utech Boulevard. Moving the 3.2, moving the 3.5 million from Bedford West oversizing to the proposed 2024-25 capital budget. Second. Thank you. Okay. I think Thank you. I uh, would you mind when somebody else is speaking, uh, would you mind putting that in the chat and also emailing it to the clerk and myself? Yep, oh, we absolutely. have it in the chat. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you. So I, I while I, I completely appreciate that there are different, um, you know, things at play here, 
uh, what I guess what I'm looking for uh, from staff is a comprehensive viewpoint for residents uh, right now to help them understand what big plan is. Uh, because, you know, at one point there is, um, uh, I believe, a plan, Peter, if you can speak to this, uh, for the 2028, 2029 year to address Larry Utech. It sounds like we are kind of moving that up a, a bit. But, but overall, there isn't any kind of comprehensive you know, functional plan uh, for the Hammonds Plains Road, you know, that, that um, and, and maybe Councillor Othick could speak to that, but obviously the connection between Bedford Highway up to Larry U Tech, you know, through to the interchange at 102 with the growth of West Bedford that we're seeing right now, I, I, I just would like to have an overview of what is the timing for all of these pieces, uh, you know, be, because the report that said Larry U Tech was gonna be a four lane highway, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, people are still wondering, well, what happened to that concept and why are there no left turning lanes or right turning lanes, uh, you know, in, in this overall development? Lucasville obviously is, is a bigger issue and I made a motion and thank you to my colleagues for supporting that. Uh, but um, just really looking forward to seeing the plan, uh, you know, and, and the timing of that, considering the new developments that we have coming online in the Hammonds Plains, West Bedford area in the next few years. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Council of uh, Peter, would you like to respond? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Just uh, maybe one comment, I think, uh, to the councillor on the timing aspect. I think the 2028 um, time frame you referred to uh, relates to the previous master plan that was approved and there was, uh, and that was when the upgrade to the Hammonds Plains Road near Utech Boulevard interchange was anticipated to occur. I believe speaking from memory now, but uh, I think that was in 2028 and that was amended uh, last year in June by council to move it ahead to, uh, to uh, 2025. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter and uh, Councillor Lovelace. Councillor Outhead, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I'm certainly will be uh, supporting this. So this is to uh, to move it ahead to uh, 2425, which is similar to what I'm going to bring forward later today on the, uh, hopefully later this morning on the. Um, the fire station situation where we have this incredible growth. Uh, Peter, I don't know if you want to speak to this quickly or not. I mean, Pam made some great comments that we've, we've did pass the revised plan, the contribution plan, if you will, for that road. Um, and of course it's it, a good portion of it is funded by the CCCs, but there is some urgency here. And I don't think I'm speaking out of turn or exaggerate when I say that even during COVID, this road is at capacity. I've heard you say that yourself, Peter. I don't think I'm putting words in your mouth uh, that we are going to have to address this with some urgency before we start uh, continuing to build the way we've been building. So I don't know if you have any comments on that, Peter, but I will be uh, happy to support this motion. But I think we need a, I think what we really need is a is the I think a plan is there, but I think we really need a funding plan with timelines, if you will, to what we're going to do and things like turning left turning lanes and the second uh, roundabout, etc., are all there in the plan. But we need a, a funding model and, and a timeline for those because it just can't go on and on while we keep building and building. Thanks, Peter. If you have thoughts, I'd appreciate it. Um, Nothing specific, Mr. Chair, through you other than uh, to say that I do share your views on that. And you are right, you and I have had conversations. And Larry, the Larry Utec Boulevard corridor was somewhat unique in that even during uh, COVID, it really didn't, um, you know, it was maybe the only corridor. We can go back and look at the, uh, at the, up, up, at the up, updates that we were getting on traffic volumes. And we really didn't see a noticeable decrease in traffic on that corridor. So I think I, I do share your view that we need to um, we need to look into it and we need to understand just what exactly is going going on out, out there. All right, I can I'll take that as a yes and thank you very much. I'll call I'm ahead. Okay, thank you very much. I don't see anybody else on my list to speak to this. Um, once again, the the motion is that the budget committee request a briefing note on road network infrastructure improvements and proposed timing of implementation to resolve infrastructure deficiencies, lack of traffic control and stormwater management and alleviating congestion 
on Hammonds Plains Road from Blue Water Road to Larry Utech Boulevard and two, moving the 3.5 million for Bedford West oversizing to the proposed 2024-25 capital budget. Ready for the question. 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 Quest question has been called over to you, Ian. Beginning with District 2, Councillor Hemsey. Affirmative. Three, Councillor Kent. I'm in favor of Councillor Lovelace supporting her residents of that district. Thank you. Four, Councillor Purdy. In favor. Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. I'm voting in favor. Seven, Councillor Mason. In favor. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. Uh, sure. 10, Councillor Morse. In favor. 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councillor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. 13, Deputy Mayor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councillor Blackburn. Voting in favor of the motion. 15, Councillor Russell. In favor. 16, Councillor Offit. Yeah, I think I'll support it, thanks. Mayor Savage. In favor. One, Councillor Dale Gammon. Voting in favor. Thank you. Super, thank you very much. That uh, motion passes. We are back on the main motion and the next speaker is Councillor Mason. Go ahead. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple quick things. I wanna second Councillor Austin's concerns about uh, the streetscaping uh, from before uh, the 2012 period, but I, I think the issue is that uh, street improvements were done all over HRM, but there was no operating cost to capital increase, right? So we've got $50,000 there and we kept adding and adding and adding and adding. And now you have things that are 10 and 12 and 15 and 20 years old that are falling apart. So uh, Goddard Street, Quinpool, Portland, uh, my favorite one is uh, Bedford Row. Uh, by the old triangle and the uh, behind the Scotia Bank and the federal building, you know that was a great project for its day, but it hasn't hardly seen a lick of uh, investment uh, since. And so now we have a significant deferred maintenance problem. And so I, I I would encourage staff to look at that when and 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 come back with uh, you know some thoughts on that. I I have uh, you know said before you know we're not going to get it done in one year, but if we if we understood the scope of this is how much money these assets cost to replace. And so two or two to four percent should be being invested every year in maintenance and uh, it isn't. So uh, there's that. Uh, I guess, you know, I think we need to have a big long conversation about, uh, you know, capital and operating uh, being and, and how we make sure that different community councils, different regions are, are getting an adequate investment. We have to kind of recognize the difference between uh, in, you know, making sure all residents have a fair shake on a, on a something closer to a per capita basis uh, to investment for residential services, but also that we recognize that we're going to have a different level of investment in commercial cores that generate significant parts of commercial taxes, which is why, not to make it about downtown, I think we need to put millions of dollars into Burnside sidewalks because all of our residents go there to work and they're not going to take buses in old Burnside in the winter if they have to walk in the road because there's no sidewalks. So uh, I think things like that are entirely reasonable. Uh, I, uh, but, but I think that's a conversation for developing policy because really the budget, as I've said before, comes out at the end of the policy. So we have to have those broad conversations about what do we value and then how are we gonna prioritize things? And then just like we're talking about with the traffic calming, it'll come out the other end and some of us will get what we want. Some of us won't get what we want because it's gonna be based on evidence and policy. Uh, my question for the CAO or this and the CFO is this, it's not related to either one of those things, is about our carbon budget. I'm increasingly concerned that we're not seeing the carbon budget piece fully reflected in the budget. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, if, if there has been an analysis of where we're at in terms of meeting our health act goals for this year with the capital budget and whether or not the business units will be coming back and talking about what they're doing this year and in the subsequent years to hit our carbon neutral goal in 2030. I feel like at this point, uh, we need every business unit to come in and talk about how they're changing their operations and making investments to meet the carbon budget and the carbon goals of HRM. And I know it's pretty late in the game to start talking like this, but I kind of thought it would happen, you know, a little bit of 
naivete on my part because we have this goal of 2030. So obviously we need to be working on it. So I, I'd like some commentary from senior staff, like, you know, do I need a motion on that? Are we going to get that? What what are we what are we doing to make sure that the council is seeing that that project is moving forward in a way that we've uh, you know I directed that it happen? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I invite other colleagues, including perhaps Kelly and John, Jerry, to weigh in as, as they see as they see fit. So, you know, you don't need a motion because in the in the business plans that you'll see coming for council, every business unit will have a Halifax. Uh, section in there and saying what they what they have done in the past year and what they plan to do in the coming year and and all that so that's on the operating budget side in the capital budget as you as you know we have uh, a lot of uh, Halifax like things that are happening there uh, and embedded in the capital budget uh, per se so uh, no you don't really need, need a motion on this because it will all be la laid out for you in, in, in the business plan for business years. Okay. thank you Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not much more to add uh, from what Jacques said, it, but uh, yeah, in this year's uh, business plans, we will have a, a slide uh, for each business unit on uh, Halifax deliverables. And, uh, you know, we're sort of in the infancy stage around how we report on that. But, you know, as we mature and start to deliver uh, on the Halifax strategy and, and our capital projects and our spending, uh, you know, certainly we'll be, you know, uh, building out KPIs and, and, and dashboards and metrics uh, around all those deliverables. So thank you. Right. I, I mean, I really feel this needs to be in, in every business unit report and perhaps we're going to need to amend the staff report to talk about carbon budget as a part of the environmental implications section that I believe is still coming from uh, Richard Zorowski, uh uh, motion or perhaps started to be there. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mason. Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a question about E31, about the Shearwater connector, um, and just some questions about the start date, the end date, no money in the four year, five year budget plan. Um, but a $50,000 design support for this coming year. So just wondering, is that what, what is happening with that potential project, if anything? And one more question. Uh, we can do that one first, maybe. It's up to you, um, but go ahead, Peter. Uh, yeah, through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so as you as you can as you can see, there's no capital capital money program in this four years. Um, the file would could be described in is almost in, inactive at this point. Uh, we are looking at the relationship between the Shearwater connector and the um, Porton Street functional plan as part of the functional as part of the functional study that's underway. Um, we do have, we have been in conversations uh, with uh, DND and the Department of uh, Trans Transport. And uh, as in previous years, we have advanced the design um, to the point where we think we have a design that, act that actually works, that actually complies. There's um, ear airfield zoning regulations that still apply to the inactive ear airfield down there that we need to comply with and that has been in previous years quite quite the exercise to go through to get that but um, we think we do have design that works uh, what we don't have is a funding is a funding plan for it um, when it was initially envisioned the cost of the road um, was in the range of seven and a half million and now as you can see it's uh, escalated to in excess of 20 million so we are um, before we come back with a funding plan, we do want to understand um, what the inter what the interplay is uh, between the road and the uh, Portland Street functional functional study that is currently underway. Okay, so it's still on the books, even though it's not really on the books, but it could be, and it needs a funding source. And okay, I was just wondering why it's in there if there's no funding allocated to it. But okay. 
I have another question about transit on, uh, thank you, Peter, E42. And I think we need it. I think we need a sheer water connector, especially with the functional study being done on Portland Street and the potential changes that could happen on that major, major collector route. We, we need more options for people to travel. Um, E42, which is uh, transit, and in the project deliverables, it's talking about possible modifications to previously implemented transit priority measures. And I see there's still $420,000 left in the budget for that. And I was wondering, what are those parameters for reinstituting or, or possible modifications for the changes that have already been made? Like, who decides? what those priorities would be for these changes. And I'm assuming this would be outside of the final plan that will be implemented for the moving forward together plan. Thank you, we have Patricia joining us. Go ahead, Patricia. Good morning, thank you, Patricia Hughes. I'm the Director of Planning and Customer Engagement at Halifax Transit. Uh, yes, this account was used originally before we started doing the major multimodal corridors. Uh, so I think it contributed in part to some of the transit priority on Gottagen and Bears and some of the initial studies with Roby and Young. Uh, so it's largely been transitioned into the multimodal corridor accounts. So there's just a few residual studies or, or engineering work that's left over still coming from this one. Uh, although largely now the... Uh, the implementation rests with Peter Duncan's group or with TPW. Uh, I believe the reference to uh, that you made to possible modifications. Uh, this was also doing very small ones at first. Some were just signs. And I'm thinking of the one on uh, Main Street in Dartmouth where we had a queue jump through an intersection. Uh, and then we just extended it a bit further and we thought it was going back a little bit and we were working with the province. So that one happened over several years uh, with just some tweaking. So. Uh, this account we expect will go away uh, shortly, just the residual now, and we're not looking for new money. So uh, going forward, we're working on the trans priority measures in a more collaborative way as part of the bigger projects. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Purdy. Councillor Outfit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I circulated a motion this morning amendment motion to uh, to my colleagues and also to uh, to the clerk. Um, I don't think this will be too controversial. It's just trying to move this uh, forward a little a little sooner in our uh, capital plan list. And that's the fire station on the Hammers Plains Road where we purchased the land several years ago now. And I've asked that we look at uh, how we could do that by perhaps delaying another project. Uh, potential impact on obviously an upcoming tax increase is not this year. And of course the potential to, to use even uh, some debt to help fund this. The other thing, and I don't know if, uh, if um, Peter or Jerry want to, I know you want me to put it on the floor. Uh, if Peter or Jerry want me to uh, uh, ask this or not, but I, I also think that we've got to, got to use things like D transfer tax, the CCCs, uh, development fees, et cetera. We have got to find other funding sources for all these things we need in our growing districts. And we've got to get our house in there before Port Wallace, uh, et cetera, because, uh, you know, this is, this growth comes at costs and we grow the tax base, we'll grow uh, the sources of revenue. I've named some of those, but we have got to get these services in there sooner. I am very worried. Uh, two more schools being built, more seniors facilities being built and fire trucks don't do well going up, uh, going up hills. And we all know, of course, about the growth in the, the Larry Utech area, the Hammers Plains area, the West Bedford area. So I move that the budget committee request a briefing support regarding moving the construction of the proposed Halifax Fax Fire Department Headquarters and Fire Station on the Hammers Plains Road to the proposed 2023 capital budget. This briefing note should include uh, funding options such as delaying another project, protect, uh, potential impact on upcoming tax increases, and potential use of debt in order to fund it. I'd also add that we could look at CCCs, uh, dev fees, etc. Uh, so moved. Second, Second. Mancini. Seconded by Councillor Mancini. Okay, go and ahead. I don't uh, think I need to say anything more, Mr. Chair, because you let me say it before mm -hmm. I put up the motion on. So thanks very much. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. You didn't uh, use the Mason Gambit where he speaks for five minutes, puts the motion on the floor, and speaks for five minutes. 
Um, that's so the thank Jennifer you very Watts. Much for that. uh, that's the Jennifer oh, that, Watts. That's campaign. Jennifer Watts. Asked, okay. My, yeah. Yes. My apologies. It, it is still a, a notable strategy. Uh, the next speaker on the list is Councillor Lovelace. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair Russell. So I completely support this. I, I recognize, though, and uh, maybe staff can speak to this, that we're, we haven't yet confirmed that this is a net new station. Uh, so I think it's important, too, for us to recognize, uh, you know, that. Uh, but in addition to, um, to that issue, you know, we have not, as I said, you know, not maybe new, uh, hopefully new, considering how quickly we're growing. And, uh, you know, I, I think, too, that we have to also acknowledge that, you know, the regional plan in 2006, 2014, um, it really didn't uh, expect that we would have this much population growth at this point. So we have far exceeded uh, the expectations uh, and the assessment overall for how many people would actually be living uh, in the West Bedford Hemis Plains area, um, and also how many, how quickly we would see new projects and new developments come on board. So I am fully in support of this. It is a safety issue. This is about public safety, uh, and uh, we we desperately need to get this fire station uh, on board up and running sooner than later. Thank you, colleagues. I hope you'll support this. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Lovelace, Deputy Mayor. Um, Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Outhead, for putting this forward. Look, I'll speak in much more detail when uh, Chief Stubing comes forward and presents his budget. Uh, I, too, have concerns about effective firefighting uh, abilities uh, throughout our municipality because of the growth. Places like West Bedford, places uh, uh, you know, like Spryfield, and you know, I look to my district when uh, Port Wallace uh, begins, too. Uh, right now, there are gaps in our effective uh, firefighting service. So again, I'll speak in more detail uh, uh, when the chief comes to present. Uh, I do uh, support uh, Councillor Outhead's uh, motion that's on the floor today. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I see Jacques uh, is, no, okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I can support this motion. It's moving up a capital uh, item a year based on circumstances that make, make sense. The other thing, I, I, I like the fact that part of the motion says to look at replacing something else, um, what the funding sources are. I just remind people that if we move something up a year, we can't just fill the following year with the millions of dollars that we just um, um, moved up. Uh, because we're, it, unless it's replacing something else, it's net new money in 23 or four, whatever it is. So I can support this. Um, uh, because of the way that uh, Councillor Outhit uh, um, phrased the motion, and we do need it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We don't have any other speakers on the list. Um, Councillor Outhit, when you read the motion, you read the 2023 capital budget. That should be the 2023 24 capital budget. So I'm just going to read the entire motion. Uh, this okay. is going. I screwed that up. Sorry. Ah, no, no worries. I just wanted to make sure that it was clear for those watching at home. Um, Uh, I would just like to read the motion as I have it, and that is uh, that the Budget Committee request a briefing note regarding moving the construction of the Halifax Fire Headquarters and Fire Station on the Hammonds Plains Road to the proposed 2023-24 capital budget. This briefing note should include funding options such as delaying another project, potential impact on upcoming taxes, increases, and potential use of debt in order to fund it. Seeing nobody else on the list, are we ready for the question? Question. Question's been called. Ian, it's over to you. Meeting with District 3, Councillor Kent. In favor. Four, Councillor Purdy. In favor. Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. In favor. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. Yes. Ten, Councillor Morse. In favor. 11, Councilor Cuddle. In favor. 12, Councilor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. 13, Deputy Mayor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councilor Blackburn. Voting in favor of the motion. 15, Chair Russell. In favor. 16, Councilor Otis. Voting yes. Mayor Savage. In favor. 1, Councilor David Gammon. Voting in favor. And two, Councilor Affirmative. 
Thank you. Thank you. That motion passes. We are back on the main motion and the next speaker on my list is Councillor Hensby. Councillor, we can't hear you. Want to pass on the next person, please? Okay, thank you very much. The next person is uh, the mayor. Mayor Savage, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Just a couple of short snappers, I think, and hope um, on, um, on uh, roads, active transportation, uh, bridges. A couple of questions. E6, the Burnside connector, um, I think it just shows our portion of it. I want to ask, um, uh, I don't know if it's Peter or who it would be would, would answer the question. What is the total cost of that project, if you could remind us, and what, our, what we're paying on it as our cost share? And secondly, is it actually going to get started in 22 23? Peter, did you catch that? Yeah, sorry about that, Mr. Uh, Chair. I was, having a, uh, I was having a hard time turning my uh, video microphone. That's actually administered, uh, that capital project's administered through our uh, business business parks group. So I, I believe I'm going to pass it over to uh, John McPherson. Thank you, Peter. Um, Mr. Chair, through you to the mayor. Uh, I'm going to need to take that away and uh, and, and get back to um, to the committee with those details. Uh, we're missing the appropriate uh, person on the call here today. Okay, I get that. It's uh, close to Christmas, but I, those, so just I, I want to just a little note on what the whole cost is. And realistically, what I'm trying to get at are we really going to spend uh, four million dollars in 22-23 on that one? The other one is similar, and that's on the Windsor Street Exchange uh, project. Um, are we going to um, get at that one? And this, I probably need a note on this as well. It may not be something people could answer now, but just exactly how the other orders of government and partners are funding that. What's the profile each year? It doesn't seem to be consistent um, how much we spend as a percentage of the total project. Um, so if I can get a note on that, but also, and that doesn't have to be today. 22, 23, um, are we good to go on that? It was going to originally start earlier. I just want to know if we're really ready to go on the Windsor Street Exchange, which is a big uh, a big deal. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I will have to get back to you with a brief note on the uh, on the uh, funding from the other from the other orders of uh, government. Uh, with regards to the um, schedule, yeah. Um, at this point, we're still slated to start start construction, start some construction in uh, 2023, with the, bulk, with the bulk of the construction being carried out over 2024 and 2025. But, but we are hopeful that we, uh, we can start some in 2023. I'm a little bit circumspect in that because there are a lot of moving, moving pieces here. We're just nearing completion uh, of the functional design now. Um, and we hope to have something to report back to the council early in 2022. Okay, so I know that, um... Mason, councillors Mason, Smith, and others are uh, interested in this. If you could get back with information, unless it's coming back to council really early, uh, just a briefing note on exactly where it is to council would be uh, certainly helpful to me. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we are starting down the list for the next time. So, uh, councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I wanted to ask uh, tr about transit, about the fare modernization uh, piece. It's noted in the budget um, for, I think it's 1.5, 1.6. I don't have it exactly in front of me. Um, this was something we had hoped to have um, this year, just uh, based on um, staff comments before. And I'm just wondering what the status of that is uh, are we finally going to do this? Like, you know, at what point do we stop budgeting 1.5, 1.6 million for, for this if it's not going to ever happen? And so I'm just wanting some reassurance from transit where that actually is. Sure, happy to do so. Um, Dave Rigg, Executive Director, Halifax Transit, uh, through the chair to the Budget Committee. 
Um, so yes, we are in the very final stages of procurement. We, we've we've identified the uh, the preferred vendor and are now working through just the final stages to uh, to get the contract awarded. So um, yes, I, I certainly share your your uh, your thoughts on that, Councillor. But uh, we are we are on the home stretch now. Um, so the the first phase of that project is about hundred thousand dollars. That's just the uh, you know without a whole lot of infrastructure. But then the second phase is that one point five million, which is actually um, putting validators on board the buses. So uh, we are very, very, very close. Okay, well, that's a relief to hear that we will shortly <laughs> actually have um, a demonstrable um, proof of this th of this project actually moving somewhere because I know uh, we've all been waiting on it a long, long time. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. So uh, I have two new questions. So if I would have, my most didn't stop before, I would have been done. Um, so so really quickly, uh, just understanding new playgrounds, it's great to see St. Stephen's will, will be getting upgrades in their playground. I'm curious from staff related to St. Joseph St. McKay, which that playground may be five or less years old, and that school is being recapitalized. I just wonder what we do with Newish playgrounds um, that will that are not going to be. We wouldn't destroy it, but we also want to put it back because I know that we are keeping that playground. Well, I, I I would hope that we're keeping it because it's pretty new, and that would go on to the new school. So I'm just wondering what's the plan for the SGM playground, or are they going to get a new playground? And if so, I think we should transfer that to another community that might be able to use a pretty brand new playground. Um, so that's the first one. Um, the other one uh, might be for you again, Jeff, and then we're, we're, we're going to have a meeting uh, relatively soonish related to the Africville rehabilitation for the walkway and the boat launch. So just to kind of give you a heads up of what I've been thinking is a lot of folks use the boat launch, not just for launching boats, but also for fishing. Uh, I can't tell you the countless amount of times I've been down there and I'm sharing it with, with I'm sharing the, the launch with somebody who I've never met, and we we have great conversations from young, old, uh, every every demographic of people from all over the place. So I think it might be great if we could look at potentially um, either making uh, and I, again, I know there's probably capital costs related to this, and we can talk more about what the impacts are, but making more of a of a walkway or even extending the 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 I don't know what it's called the boardwalk, so more folks can actually be there safely. Um, um, but I'm just wondering if, if we wanted to extend that for folks who are fishing, who use, who, who use it extensively, is that a, a potential for us to talk about? And again, we're going to have an offline meeting, but I just wanted to kind of flag that in public because it was something that was, I was asked about. And the, the last one, actually, it came up, and this is for Dave McIsaac, but it came up earlier. I was just wondering, because I'm getting lots of questions on the Almond Street bike lane. And I know that we're hoping to, it's in the budget for, for this year. So, so Dave, I'm just wondering at what point will we be able to go to the public with the finalized designs? And I think that is, yep, that is it for questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I see Jeff Spears. Yeah. Good morning, Councillor. Uh, Jeff Spears, Manager of Parks Capital Projects with Parks and Recreation. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the councillor, with respect to St. Joseph's and the school, we are having ongoing meetings with HRCE to discuss relocation of the playground um, on the same site, removal and dispose of at a different site, and or a new playground at the school. So those discussions are ongoing with HRCE, and I can keep you updated, councillor, on what our decisions are with respect to that future playground. Um, but the school will have a playground put back in, whether it's the same playground or a new one. And with respect to Africville, the design is ongoing at this time, and you and I can talk offline about some of the specifics around the design details with respect to that boat ramp. Thank you. Okay, and you were also asking for uh, Dave McIsaac? Yeah. Uh, David McIsaac, Manager of Active Transportation. Uh, Councillor Smith, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, no, no problem. Just um, uh, when we'll be able to to show finalized design for all the street bike lane to the public. 
Um, well, we're we we're finished the the consultation for that project, and we are, you know, basically in the in the detailed design phase right now. So we we didn't intend to go back out to the public. Uh, no, no, just, the just being able to say, hey, this Sorry. is what's going to be built. Um, we could. Uh, Typically, we start putting out information as it's being built on the website. So right. if okay. uh, you have some specific wonder. questions or have some constituents with, with uh, some questions about what it will look like, we could, uh, we could provide that information to you. It's going to be unidirectional, protected bike lanes, uh, and, uh, and there's going to be a report to council. I think we're going to try to get that to you on January the, the 27th uh, okay. uh, for approval of the project. The, that would go to Transportation Standing Committee. I believe that's the current current track right. for that report. In in my time's up, but just just to just to make to clarify, I don't mean for us to go back to the public. Just being able to say, hey, this is what we're building, is what what I was wondering. Yeah, for sure. That will that will all be uh, very uh, uh, well explained uh, in that council report. Okay, great, excellent. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dave McIsaac and Councillor Smith, Councillor Cuddle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just have another question here. Um, it's about uh, the Herring Cove um, uh, major strategic multimodal corridor. And um, I'm just looking at the budget and I see that, you know, a previously approved budget, we have 500,000 and then we're not looking for more funding for that until 25, 26. And knowing that we've approved the 90% design on phase one and moving to the 60% design on phase two. I'm just wondering, um, I, you know, and, and only 5 million in 2025, 26, what is the timeline on the implementation of this project? And um, how does that relate to, you know, the um, BRT, the implementation of the BRT and, um, and other, you know, I know tied into this whole functional plan is upgrades to sidewalks because we don't have continuous sidewalks. Um, but I'm just wondering if someone could just speak to the timeline on this work. Wondering, go ahead, Peter. For Jerry. Um, I, maybe uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I can start, and Dave, you, we may want to jump in and give some more background on the actual uh, de de uh, details of the construction. But right now, in the 10-year uh, um, capital plan that we have uh, worked out between planning and, and development and TP, TPW and Halifax Transit, um, we're looking, so the $5 million that's programmed within this four-year cycle is to begin the construction between Armdale Rotary and the Persons Cove Road. And then, and there are some land acquisition issues there as well, I think. And, um, and then construction is anticipated to continue uh, in phases, spending anywhere between two to $5 million per year um, between 2025 and 2030. Um. Right, so um, maybe this is something we can discuss offline. I, I, I'm just wondering about the, you know, the strategy of doing all these phases of construction that you know, literally this road then will be torn up for years and that's only getting us through phase one and not even through phase two. So if we're looking at a 10 year capital plan, that um, is that for phase one and two? So that's that's um, through you, Mr. Chair. That's for all phases. So between 2025 and 2030, that's to take you right from the Armdale Rotary out to the uh, Gray, Greystone uh, Greystone Drive. I think it is. Okay, so that's so getting up around phase two uh, from Glenora to Greystone. I mean that that's still quite a ways off. Okay, so my second question then, it's related to um, traffic signals. And I'm just, I was trying to find in here, um, I see some traffic signal improvements. I don't see anything about new traffic signals. Is there any, um, am I missing that somewhere? I'm just wondering if that's in here, where it would be, if there's new traffic signals. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask either Tasso Kuchalakis or Roddy McIntyre to take that question, please. Do 
we have Tasso or someone else? Roddy, there we are. Okay. Hi, good afternoon or good morning. Uh, so, Councillor, uh, which uh, was there a particular location you were uh, you were re, um, interested in? Yeah, we've been talking about the location at Drysdale and Herring Cove Road, and um, okay. that was recognized in the 2019 functional plan as as you know, needing a traffic signal. Um, recently in talking with traffic, it's been moved to high priority. Um, but part of that discussion is knowing that the Herring Cove functional plan is coming and road work will be done in relation. Um, I'm just thinking like, you know, this is kind of being identified as being needed now. Um, and, uh, you know, if the road work was happening in a year or two, uh, you know, that would make sense to postpone that. But given that this work isn't happening for potentially 10 years, um, if we're lucky, uh, there's no more COVID delays and other such things. Um, I'm just wondering um, if, you know, where, where that might fit into the capital plan. Okay, yes, yeah, so, so through you, Mr. Chair, to the Councillor, what we're doing uh, at, the, at, at this time is we're, we're working with uh, staff with uh, transportation planning, street transportation, transportation planning as they're working on the functional plan, um, recognizing that, yes, that section is, is further out, um, but what we need to do is confirm um, what design requirements we need to consider for the signal so that we don't, uh, one, we don't build something that is going to then have to be significantly um, modified when they do get there with the functional plan. And also that what we build uh, now or, or within the next couple of years um, can actually be built um, in the current situation. Uh, like if we need to modify the, the intersection to fit with the functional plan in order to build the signals, will that modification create other issues because the remainder of the road on either side won't uh, won't match up? So what we're doing now is working with our, our colleagues in uh, in uh, strategic transportation to to sort that all out, and we're hoping to uh, to start uh, conversations with our, our design group to to start advancing at least the design for this. Right. Um, okay. So, but that would that fall into this capital plan somewhere or? At, at this time, we wouldn't, because uh, it's still all just in in-house work. It's just our, our general everyday work. We wouldn't uh, identify funding for construction until we knew uh, what we were going to be able to move forward with. So it wouldn't be in the current capital plan that we're looking at because we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have any sort of uh, cost estimate uh, or whatnot, and we're and we're not sure yet which year it can be constructed in. So we would look to add that to a future year. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next speaker on the list is Councillor Hensby. Councillor Hensby, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Just had to uh, uh, unmute some stuff. There we uh, go. My question I put back in the chat room back early on in the discussion in regards to uh, on page uh, B22. I'm kind of hoping that in the general budget plan and we're talking about demolition of some of these buildings that we can look at some of the useful aspects that still can be uh, ascertained from some of these amenities. Um, the Eastern Shore Consolidated School in Mosier River has been closed for a number of years. There's an opportunity there if we, if we can modify the demolition to leave the foundation as well as the steel beam girders, the well and septic, uh, just have them capped and stuff that that could still be utilized as a future housing project. To, to raise it all together, we're losing value of the potential property use. Um, you know, just that uh, I've had some discussions with some developers in the area that they're, they're interested in the concept, but the question is at what price? You know, they, they could get the property for a dollar if we wish to sell it for a dollar as is, but there's gonna be a sizable investment just to modify the demolition for them or for the municipality. So. If the municipality is going to put this kind of money, they, they got four hundred thousand dollars in the budget for it, uh, with one hundred ninety for months spent from last year. I'd like to know if we can be a partner in some kind of a housing project, just to a, a modified demolition of the property to make it in a usable state. So, perhaps if John McPherson could could reply to that comment, please, or or, or Roddy, whoever it may be. 
Sure, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the councillor. Uh, when we look at the, the demolition, we'll take into account um, best value. So uh, best value in terms of marketing the property for sale or if through other channels within HRM, there's an identified um, reuse possibility, then those will be taken into account. I could tell you, for example, uh, Graham Creighton High School, now the junior high school, when that was, uh, when I was the MLA at the time, that's what we did with that structure. We, de we, de we basically demolished the walls and the ceilings and the uh, roof and stuff, but left the girder standing, left the floor standing and rebuilt it from the ground up with that infrastructure still in place. And we have a beautiful facility there now today at a portion of the cost and it would have been to try to replace the foundation, replace the steel girders, anything else. So if we're looking for a rural housing uh, opportunity, this could be one of those particular projects that would be significant that we can explore. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if that uh, warrants a response. Well, do I need to put that in a staff report or do our staff just take that commentary at, at face value or do I need to have a, a more um, concise directive? Would staff, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the answer is yes, you would need a, a motion on that. Thank you. Then, Mr. then Mr. Chairman, I'll draft up something and put it in the chat. You can go on to the next speaker, please. Okay, we have uh, two speakers left, uh, just to give you an essence of the timeline. And it would be better to send it via email to the clerk and myself, rather than put it in the chat. Uh, Councillor Morse, go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Just a couple brief questions on uh, Blue Mountain, Birch Cove Lakes, uh, D13. Um, we're significantly expanding um, the budget for this park, which is a national candidate national park site. Um, and I'm really happy to see that. I'm, I'm just wondering if staff could give a few more details about the trailhead parking lot. Uh, half a million dollars seems like a lot. Are there any other amenities with that? And also uh, we'll be spending a quarter of a million on park planning. Um, would other trailheads be considered as part of the park planning process? Thanks. Do we have someone? I see Jeff, go ahead. Good morning, Jeff Spares, Manager of Parks Capital Projects. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the Councillor. With respect to the proposed parking lot, uh, the scope of work involves the associated gravels, concrete curb, pavement, um, and reinstatement. So $500,000 does seem like a lot of money, but the reality is that's what the new parking lot will cost. It also includes new sewer and water laterals for a future washroom building. And it'll include some amenities such as waste receptacles and ID signage. Great, thank you. Are you able to comment on the, uh, the other funding for planning and that sort of thing and whether there are other trailheads being considered as part of that process? I will defer the question to Nalini. She may have some more intel on the planning with future trailhead parking lots. Uh, good afternoon, Councillor. Uh, to you through the chair. I can't see myself on this video, but I'm assuming that um, we you guys can, can see hear you. See me. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to speak to. Um, the item related to the park planning, if that's correct, Councillor Moores, you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the, the Parks Canada portion? That's correct, thank you. Okay, yeah, no problem. There's, um, there's a series of background studies that are going to be done over the, well, initiated probably in January because the staff report um, that Regional Council Review just got approved. So with that direction from Council, we will start to undertake all of that work uh, in partnership with Parks Canada. And um, I believe they have a timeline on their end. So we are in the middle of working through contribution agreements with them because they have uh, their partnership involves uh, financial support as well. So uh, we will be able to provide a further update on the details of that contribution agreement related to the statement of collaboration in the next coming weeks. 
um, but things are progressing on that on that end in line with council's um, approval. I think that was last week. That's great. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Morse. Uh, Councillor Purdy, go ahead. Thank you. Actually, I solved one of my problems here because I, I found what I was looking for. But the other, I just noticed something missing uh, from the capital plan, and that is the Ross Road realignment. And I know that it's still in, you know, the very, very beginning, beginning stages of, of all the pieces that need to come together for this to happen. But um, just wondering why something like that wouldn't be on here, kind of like the Shearwater connection. So it's not funded. There's no funding that is allocated to it, but it's there because knowing that it will possibly happen in the future. So it's just kind of earmarked in the capital budget plan for potential possible implementation when those pieces do come together. Okay, can we have someone uh, respond about the Ross Road realignment, please? I see Peter. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, and I am sorry, it's taking a real long time for my video to turn turn on. Um, so I think the question, I really don't have a good a good response as to why the Ross Road project is not in the budget other than we're still, um, in the land ac acquisition stage. Um, so presumably when we do um, acquire the right of way, then we can move forward to program some of the funds. And, but I also don't have a good answer to the question is why, why is the Shearwater connector in the budget where it's, where it's not uh, funded, so. Okay, thank you. So I guess my concern is answered and that soon as a piece does come together it will be implemented in in the future capital budget the i get i think where i'm confused is because this is years out this this budget is not just for next year it's for like the next five years or four years so um makes you feel a little anxiety when you think, oh my goodness, this needs to be done yesterday and that there's a potential it might not even get into the budget for the next five years. So thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hensby, it looks like you have your motion ready. It is five after 12. Um, we, have, uh, we have this uh, amendment from Councillor Hensby and then would drop into the regular council meeting to ratify this motion. Uh, committee, what is your wish as far as either continuing now or uh, I, I'm seeing some continuation signals or, or breaking for lunch and, and let's go now. Okay, go ahead, no. Councillor. Go ahead, Councillor Hensby. Uh, first of all, on that Ross Road realignment, I believe they still carry over funds from previous budgets that should be probably looked at. Um, I don't think it's a new project. It's been discussed for many years, and I think it's still there somewhere in a budget account somewhere. Uh, in regards to the uh, modified demolition on page B22, I hereby request a staff report on the possibility of doing a modified demolition of the Eastern Shore Consolidated School structure in Mosh River, thereby leaving the steel girder superstructure, concrete floor pad, septic system well, that can remain to be used as a foundation for a rural housing project. Uh, thank you. That is effectively a motion I have pasted in into the chat. Um, and I'm wondering if we could have a seconder for that. I see Councillor Kent signaling. Um, Second. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Hensby. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, we know that uh, housing is an issue right across our municipality, even in the rural communities. 
we're having situations where even our seniors are looking at having to move out. This might be an opportunity where the uh, superstructure of the school can be uh, turned into uh, an apartment building of some sort for for uh, for the seniors to live in their own communities. This was recently done with the uh, old um, school in, in East Jador. Uh, right now, the Senior Solutions are converting that old uh, school into an 18 18 unit apartment building for seniors. So it has been done there. And I believe it can be done elsewhere. And I also have another school yet to be coming to our, uh, to our procession in Tangier, which a similar situation can be, but I don't want that Tangier facility to fall in disarray as much as uh, the Eastern Shore Consolidated School in Moche River has. So I think that once we get these surplus schools from our, uh, from our school board or from our regional education center, that we should not let them uh, deteriorate. We need to act on them quickly to, re to recapitalize that asset into something that community can use. I ask for council support and looking at this as a modified demolition, we, we, we can do uh, get rid of a part, some of it, but not all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Just for clarification, Councillor Hensby, is this somewhere in the current bunch of book that we have? Page B22. Page B22. Thank you very much. Are there any speakers to this amendment, uh, to this request for the staff report? Uh, I see Councillor Purdy for everybody else. Uh, please uh, indicate that in the chat. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Purdy. Sorry. I need a third hand. Um, question about Councillor Hensby's amendment. Is there any risk or safety issue involved with not taking it, uh, the demolition all the way down? That, that was my only question about that. The reason why that couldn't or shouldn't happen. Do we have someone who can answer about the risk involved? Sure, Mr. Chair, through you to the councillor. Uh, that's certainly something that would need to be looked at. Uh, uh, just, uh, John, because we don't have your camera on, uh, this is John McPherson. Go ahead, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, that would be something that we would have to look at as part of the uh, staff report uh, when we're looking at risks. I see John Draves. Would you like to expand on that? I, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just uh, wondering if, if this is truly a budget motion or something that should be addressed by council on notice of motion in terms of the process versus the funding. I'm not sure, uh, uh, John, I would almost leave that to your call. Well, perhaps we could hear from the councillor in terms of that when it comes back to him. Um, well, there is nobody else on the list, so Councillor Hensby? I would assume that if it's in the budget as is, whereas it uh, would be just be done without any particular direction. I think that this uh, motion request is more selective in its, in its approach. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, if I leave it as it is now, those go in there and just tear the whole thing out altogether, leaving nothing behind. And that's what I don't want to see happen. I want to explore the opportunity of having some superstructure that can be modified. But, but Councillor, through, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the, to <clears throat> the committee, the issue here is this, is this an, an added item in terms of additional funding that's going to be added to the budget adjustment list or a reduction in funding? And, and so this, this all leads towards building the budget. It seems to me that really what you're looking for, Councillor, here is, is an update on the project itself, not in terms of, of saving money or adding money to the budget, which is really where we're headed to in terms of these uh, supplemental reports for the budget adjustment list. Uh, the money is in the budget already for the full demolition. I'm not asking for a full demolition, I'm looking at a partial demolition. So could that be a cost savings? I would hope so. Uh, so I'll leave it to the staff report to uh, perhaps answer your question. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for that clarification. One, I see Ian, go ahead. Just one question. Is, is the intention of briefing note or is the intention of full staff report? This, this would be a briefing note to add to in terms of any budgetary savings at the end in, uh, at this point. I don't, if, if it's a full staff report, then it should be on notice of motion at council. I'll make that change. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I don't see any Preston. other. I heard someone. I don't Preston. see any other. Oh, the question has been called on uh, on the staff report. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, over to you. Beginning with District 4, Councillor Purdy. Uh, voting yes on the staff report. Five, Councillor Austin. Aye, in favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. In favor. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. Yes. Ten, Councillor Morse. In favor. 11, Councillor Cuddle. In favor? 12, Councillor Stoddard. In favor of the motion? 13, Deputy Mayor Lovelace. In favor of a briefing note? 14, Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. 15, Chair Russell. In favor? 16, Councillor Otis. Yes. Mayor Savage. Yes. 1, Councillor Dagle Gammon. Voting in favor. Two, Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. And three, Councillor Kent. In favor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That amendment passes. So at this point, we have no further speakers on the floor for the main motion. Um, question. Question on the main the, motion. So the main motion, and I'm Going to, I, I would like to read it, but uh, this has been a late breaking, uh, uh, a late breaking uh, uh, report request. So I'm I'm going to skip that. But the rest of the main motion is the budget committee recommend Halifax Regional Council one approve the base capital budget for 2022-23, and approve in principle the 23-24, uh, 24-25, and 25-26 base capital outlooks as per attachments one and two subject to approval of external funding program applications to approve the schedule of the 22-23 advanced tenders as, as per attachment three. Three, approve the schedule of 22-23 capital reserve withdrawals as per attachment four. Four, approve the schedule of 22-23 multi-year capital projects as per attachment five. Five, that the budget committee request a briefing note to develop options for the budget amendment uh, and my screen just went sideways. Um, to develop options for the budget adjustment list to accelerate the upgrade program for HRM's budget crosswalks. Six, the budget committee request a briefing note on the impact of and funding sources for an additional 7.5 million to the proposed 23-24 capital uh, budget for new sidewalks on municipal roads. Seven, the budget committee request a briefing note on a road network infrastructure improvements and proposed timing of implementation to resolve infrastructure deficiencies, lack of transit control, lack of traffic control, I'm sorry, uh, and stormwater management and alleviating congestion on Hammonds Plains Road from Blue Water Road to Larry Utech Boulevard. B, moving the 3.5 million for Bedford West oversizing to the proposed 24-25 capital budget. And eight, that the budget committee request a briefing note regarding the possibility of a modified demolition on of the Eastern Shore consolidated structure in Moser River. That is the motion that we are voting on. Ian, it's over to you. Uh, Mr. Chair, so the, we only need to ratify the first four in regional council. The others are briefing notes that will come back to this committee. Um, and they'll be considered in the budget adjustment list at the end, just, just so we're clear. Mr. So would Chair, that be just, all, would that Mr. Chair be, just on the list there, I didn't notice the fire station one. Did I miss it? Request for... Uh, I did not notice the fire station one either. You're correct. Thank you. And uh, John, how would you suggest we proceed with this? Uh, we have one motion at this point when it gets to regional council. Um, would it be basically split into two motions? I would I would split uh, the the um, the recommendation to regional council relates to the first four, and then I would just add and and additionally uh, move for the following. So that's that's all added to the main motion. 
we can we can tidy it up when we get to council, but that's that's what we're doing for the record. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, sorry, Chair, wouldn't we just be able to add that to the list of amendments right now, just to approve here in principle? On the fire Councilor, station one, yes, that should. Councillor Outhit, that was that was just moving things over uh, into my one document. It was just missed on a copy and paste. It is there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So that is the full motion. Um, once again, we don't have any further speakers. Ian, it's over to you for the vote. Beginning with District Five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Six, Councillor Mancini. I'm voting in favor of the motion. Seven, Councillor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councillor Smith. Four. Nine, Councillor Cleary. Yes. Ten, Councillor Morse. In favor. Eleven, Councillor Cuddle. In favor. Thirteen, Councillor Stoddard. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, Councillor Stoddard, sorry. No problem at all. In favor of the motion. 13, Deputy Mayor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councilor Blackburn. Voting in favor of the motion. 15, Chair Russell. Favor. 16, Councilor Outhead. Yes. Mayor Savage. Yes. One, Councilor David Gammon. Voting in favor of the motion. Two, Councilor Hensby. Affirmative. Three, Councilor Kent. In favor. And four, Councilor Purdy. Nope. Uh, Purdy? Voting no. Yeah, voting no. Thank you. Voting no. Okay, that motion passes. Councilor Purdy, you indicated that you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask if we could vote on each point separately, but that's okay. Um, yeah, okay, so that, that motion has passed. Um, at this point, uh, since that motion has passed and that is basically everything to do with the budget committee, uh, we should adjourn from this and, and reconvene as regional council. Uh, Ian and John, would you like a few minutes in order to get ready? And that would also give the rest of us an opportunity for a few minute break. The motion is ready for ratification whenever um, council is ready. I, I, colleagues, I have to jump on another meeting at 1230. Uh, can we just do this quickly? Can we get right into regional council and ratify this quickly? Okay. Motion, to a, motion to adjourn the budget committee meeting, please. Moved. Thank you. We are adjourned. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Okay. What am I doing? I don't have any script or anything here. Um, are we just, I don't have to go through any of the formalities, call the meeting to order, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, yes, Mr. call regional council to order. would have to call the meeting to order. The meeting's called to order. The only item we have is to ratify what was done in committee of the whole. So I'm going to ask Ian, what do I have to do to make that happen? Mayor Savage, we have a recommendation from Budget Committee. Um, I will, I can share my screen and post the motion in the chat. Uh, it does, it is a request to be ratified by a regional council today. Uh, we only have four bullets. I'll post them in the chat for what regional council needs to approve. So just so, just so people are clear, so the other ones are passed at uh, budget committee, and we'll go back to budget committee. We don't have to deal with them here. The briefing right. notes requested can are just we'll come right back to budget committee. Okay. All right, council. What is your wish? Does somebody want to put that on the floor? I would like to, if you don't mind. Councillor Russell, Chair of Auditory Finance. Thank you. I move that uh, the but uh, that uh, Halifax Regional Council one approve the base capital budget for 22-23 and approve in principle the 23, 24, 24, 25, and 25, 26 base capital outlooks as per attachments one and two, subject to the approval of external funding program applications. Two, approve the schedule of 22-23 advanced tender requests as per attachment three. Three, approve the schedule of 22-23 capital reserve withdrawals as per attachment four. Four approve the schedule of 22-23 multi-year capital projects as per attachment five. I so move. Seconded. That's been moved and seconded. Are we ready for the question, Collins? Mr. Second. Chair, just a quick question, Mr. Mayor. 
Mr. Uh, Councillor Arthur. Uh, thanks. So when this comes back, so this is being approved today, it will come back on the 27th. It's approved in principle today. We'll come back on the 27th, at which time we will have the briefing notes and we'll have another opportunity to amend this budget if, if required. Is that correct? This is approved. The capital budget would be approved today, plus in principle, the, the forward looking for the next number of years. If there's a desire to change the capital budget, it'll take a two thirds vote. At this point, council um, is approving it. Um, it's not in principle, it's approved. Okay, but it's approved subject to the answers that we're waiting for in a number of briefing notes. So John, how's that gonna work? They, they would be added to the budget adjustment list and we'll deal with them at the end of the, of the uh, budget process. Now that makes sense, yes, thanks very much. Is everybody uh, clear on that? Ready? If we want to do any last minute changes, it's going to take a special motion, a two thirds vote, or just a motion. We, we we'll deal with them in the budget adjustment list, uh, uh, Councillor. You know, the key thing here is the advanced tenders and the capital reserve withdrawals, which need council's approval in order to have have that happen now. Okay. Ready for the question, colleagues? Question. Beginning with District 6, Councilor Mancini. Voting in favor of the motion. Seven, Councilor Mason. For the motion. Eight, Councilor Smith. Four. Nine, Councilor Cleary. Yes. Ten, Councilor Morse. In favor. Eleven, Councilor Cuddle. In favor. Twelve, Councilor Stoddard. In favor of the motion. Thirteen, Deputy Mayor Lovelace. Voting yes. 14, Councilor Blackburn. Voting in favor of the motion. 15, Councilor Russell. In favor. 16, Councilor Otis. Voting yes. Mayor Savage. Yes. One, Councilor David Gammon. Voting in favor of the motion. Two, Councilor Hensby. Affirmative. Three, Councilor Kent. In favor. Four, Councilor Purdy. Voting no. And five, Councillor Austin. In favor. Thank you. Okay, colleagues. I think that's all we have to do here at uh, Regional Council, correct, Ian? Mm, motion to adjourn. Well, first of all, we got to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Christmas. Motion to adjourn. Merry Christmas, all. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Season everyone. Season Merry greetings. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Happy I holidays. Accept, I accept the motion to adjourn. All the best. Bye.